What is all this stuff around? I don't know. I, it's triggering. Just started the stream and I feel like there's a whole bunch of bricks around us. It's an awkward feeling because I don't like bricks. Yeah, me neither. I think I see a few screws on your side too. No. Mm hmm. It's the worst. It's pretty much the worst. It doesn't belong it, on my stream, especially not it a Star Wars stream. Dude, definitely not. Um, I can't believe this. You know, I think uh, it's pretty clear that Tony Gilroy was not interested in keeping things Star Wars. What was he thinking? Like, what do you think was going through his head? And he's like writing the script and he said, bricks in the background. I bet Dave Filoni gave him a note. And I bet he got so upset about it. He tried to look for every opportunity to put bricks and screws and actual AK-47s and all kinds of other different things in there yeah. out of spite. That's I know. I, I know. And and I when I saw that, I couldn't believe it. It's the most un-Star Wars thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, the music's one thing, but... Music's one thing. I mean, um, bricks... I just, uh, I feel like quitting. I feel like quitting as a Star Wars fan. I feel like quitting as a YouTuber. I just, I can't. I don't know. If it's pretty, it's anymore. pretty devastating. I've uh, been trying to come to terms with it. And then for whatever reason, the internet thinks it's, the, you know, they're doing the internet thing. They think it's okay. Being, they think it's great. Yeah. You know, I've seen all these signs like support screws and bricks. Support, support screws and bricks. I know. I know. Um, you know, but, but there is a little militia against them. There's a little That's good. fringe minority against them. Almost a resistance, if you will. A rebellion resistance. of sorts. A rebellion. Yeah. We have a Cassian of our own against the mm. bricks and the and the screws. But, um, you know, it's a tough fight. And uh, we're not going to give up against the Empire. What can I say? That's good. So would you say that when it comes to Star Wars fans, maybe they've got a few screws loose? I would say they're quite bricked up. With anger. Oh. Oh, 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 let's go, Trump and bars, dude. Uh, yeah, I get, I get that, I get that feeling as well, man. <laughs> Holy shit! What's going on, chat? How you guys doing? Hope you guys are having a great Monday so far. Um, we're starting off the stream here. We're gonna get Hannah in in a little bit. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about Andor. We're gonna talk a little bit about bricks and screws. We're gonna talk about uh, some other news in Star Wars. And then we're just going to shoot the shit with you guys and have a great stream. So thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, thanks. First of all, yeah, plug. Thanks, everyone, for grabbing the merch linked in the description. You guys have blown up sales. And I see some of you can't even order a sweater anymore because it's sold out. Mm. But uh, some are still getting through. So keep trying. Keep doing your thing. Yeah. And I uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and good news about episode two as well. So I'll, I'll be announcing some stuff going coming in the oh, future. Oh. And yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. Was asking, no, uh, no bricks. No bricks, no bricks in there. Two. Dude, if I see a single screw of brook in your fan film, like no, Loki, I no am gonna bricks do a video. In episode two. Uh, Actually. But yeah, I was asking you before we went live, I was like, bro, like what is the are you gonna wear anything else ever? Or are you like Johnny Cash now? Where you're just am, that's what you this wear. This is what I'm gonna that's wear the... until the end of the sale. So I think there's another like nine days left or ten days left. And uh I've never had such successful merch sell. Great. Well, it's really great in looking life. and it's very you know, it it's a nice product. So yeah, it's a really nice, nice design, and I love it. Love it. Man in love black it. theory. Man in black. How was your week? There you go. Good, man. Weekend was chill. Um, Friday, I randomly went out and didn't realize it was Black Friday. Do you guys have Black Friday? Because you don't have Thanksgiving, we, but we do. We we copy the Americans a little bit. Okay. So yeah, we went out and just randomly was like, why is it like Dawn of the Dead? And then we realized what was going on. So we did a little Black Friday shopping and then just kind of kicked it over the weekend, man. Uh, played some video games. You know, I'm still liking Warzone a lot. Uh, but yeah, it was nice. I'm starting to get into that kind of holiday vibe. We're playing Christmas music in the house. You know, we're looking at decorating and things of that nature. So it's yeah, it's good cool. vibes, you know, for sure. Yeah, I went out and got a tree yesterday. So. Nice. Did you go out like into the... Into did the... you like hack, cut one down? And Yeah, yeah, cut one down, yeah. Yeah, but Very at cool. a Christmas tree farm. Oh, we we want to do that. The only problem with that right now is the dogs. Like the dogs would destroy that. You know what I mean? So we we got a little tiny one that's like raised up. Um, 
but yeah eventually that would be fun take liam out there and be like pick out a tree son you know yeah yeah that'd be cool so nine footer yeah uh, damn yeah a nine footer yeah what how'd you get it home strap it onto the the top of the lambo and hit like 60 miles per hour <laughs> <laughs> no no i put it on my truck it was uh okay they're, they're surprisingly not heavy at all yeah i guess that's fair they're kind of christmas tree it's a pine tree. lot of yeah a lot of pines tree. yeah true true yeah. um so to um kind of talk about my overall anger with bricks and star wars i have also decided to have them in episode two as a sort of um uh well, just take a look for yourself. <laughs> nice, dude. I would like for Vader to go through some bricks. This nice. is a kind of portrayal of hey Tony, we know what you're doing with these bricks in Star Wars. Yeah, man. Okay. And this fucking slide. I'm a break. I them. like it. I'm a break. I like all. it. Yo, isn't it wild that you actually liked Andor overall, and yet you seem to be the poster child of toxically hating and or yeah but like, that's only I, that's only to stupid people <laughs> that's, only the, that's only the people who don't watch my channel or or listen to anything i say i think that's fair um i also think it's absolutely wild because we always joke about and we've been doing the show for two plus years and we always joke about how i can stir all kinds of shit up and mm. somehow like a matador with a big red thing you attract all the hate and it somehow like goes around me and it didn't exactly happen that way this time because you know obviously like i kind of made a hoopla of like walking away and i think some of the you know frustration with me or the hate for me is like kind of justified but bro like mm. for some reason people have this hate boner for you yeah in ways that are like baffling to see like truly baffling like you know on twitter and on reddit and just you know the screw and brick comment seemed so benign in like a such a offhanded like <laughs> part of the stream uh and it became this this like war cry to these people like this thing they just beat like a drum over and mm -hmm. over again to try to i don't know make the case that you shouldn't have your platform or something like it's it is so wild how uh these fans do this you know what i mean it was really really crazy to witness over the past couple of days bro like it really was and i'm sure people in chat can relate but i want to say before i finish that thought that there actually are a ton of awesome reasonable star wars fans that have not only been supporting you online but have also been supporting me and have been hitting me up privately in messages and so i wanted to say thank you to all of those star wars fans and just say that like they're not, we're not all bad you know but also kind of be like damn like that we do have this kind of issue with with this group within the fandom yeah i would like to say a big thank you to everyone who uh supports me and has sent some nice dms over the uh, the weekend and stuff I appreciate it. I do want you to know that I don't have Twitter, so I don't check anything unless I go looking for it out of my way, which I don't. Um, came to my attention that there were some people blowing up about it, and so I, I Googled it in that video, and that was the only time I did it. And then after that, I was like, all right, well, they're just doing their thing. So at this point, it's I'm used to it. Like I think probably the most insane one was um, when I said I want to see Anakin chopping up... Um, Jedi Masters, Knights, and Padawans at the temple. And then mm -hmm. there was a minority of people, very loud people that were saying, I wanted to see children chopped up. Yeah. It, or, during Order 66. And uh, I ignored it. I was just like, you people are very stupid because there's nowhere where I said children. And then Disney goes in and actually chops up the children in the show. Doesn't yeah. even show the Padawans or the Knights or the Masters. It actually, they actually have the children. <laughs> yeah. And I was just, like, well, damn. that's... Yeah. that's funny that's interesting but no look i mean I, all i focus on are the people who are here and support us and um you know have a brain to critically think and to realize that other people do have opinions and they actually listen to the things we say or or um things i say and that's all i really care about you know everyone else who has it in their minds that i'm this or that that's up to them and i think that's you know their prerogative and that's their right um at the end of the day you know 
all my analytics went up over the weekend more than what they would have. Um, merch sales were inflated. Uh, views were inflated. Subscribers went up. So, hey, cool. That's yeah. nice, too. That's a nice little bonus on top of it. But at the end of the day, I'm here for you guys, and we love doing this show. I love making my videos, and I've been here for six-plus years, and I have seen the worst of it. I have seen all of it, and uh, nothing surprises me anymore. So, in fact, if something I say isn't trending on Twitter or being blown out of proportion, I'm wondering what's going on. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. No. Yo, it's, it's cool. It's just so weird. Like I've had some people kind of say, and I think we touched on this a little bit last week too. It feels like, you know, maybe because a lot of, you know, what used to be known as the fandom menace creators mm. have backed off. Cause like I was talking to Jay a little bit about this. Cause I was just kind of like confused by that whole right. Like, concept. Right. But like, uh, yeah, it does seem like everybody's kind of from that group. A lot of people have gone their own way. A lot of people have actually moved past Star Wars content, like in general, they don't even really do it anymore. And so it does seem yeah. like some of these people uh, in the Star Wars community are just looking for a new villain or like a new target. And I find it so crazy because these are the same people that can't, at least for the most part, seem to be unable to recognize that Star Wars is in a rough spot. I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to 2023. And, you know, you've got probably the best year lineup of content they've had in a long time. And it should be dope. But like, make no mistake about it. Like, there's there's problems, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you and I talk about them almost every week. Yeah, every week. And it seems like the, these people are unable to admit that there's issues. And yet, at the same time, think you're this crazy big problem within the fan base it's almost like if they feel yeah. like if they could erase you stars Star Wars would just be fine there are no star wars problems you're the problem yeah. you know what i mean and i'm like damn like that just is really wild to me you know to be that i think delusional you know what i mean about it and it's just it's been really odd i know like we you and i have gotten into little um just disagreements about how we label these people because like in my mind and, and again like i'm trying to get better as far as not condemning the entire fan base but i do feel like this is kind of a unique problem to star wars and the star wars fan base continues to look really bad when stuff like this happens whether they're making you look bad or people are seeing through the facade and understanding that the fan base is just rabid and very toxic yeah it's i mean i guess like i just wonder how we as a fan base actually will move forward like do you think there will be a day oh it yeah of course i well i think there's always going to be, be people who are intolerant of other people's opinions um i was going to make a little skit the other day and um I, I will eventually when i get a moment but essentially i look at twitter or some people uh kind of like in this light where it's like hey we're a welcoming place we want everyone to feel welcome and happy here. We're all about inclusivity. Um, what's your opinion on Andor? Well, I don't know. I didn't really like it. Fuck you. Yeah. You're wrong. We're going to kill you. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's like, you can only say this about Andor. You can only say this about this topic. And if you don't, we're going to be a pitchfork mob. And we're going to come after everything that you've done and try to destroy you and defame you and put words in your mouth. And that's just a... I don't think that'll ever end. I think that's just a people thing. I don't think that's really a Star Wars thing. I think it's a people thing when they attach it to an emotion that they have or they're coming from a dark place in their life or they're perhaps they got nothing going on in their life and they want to um, feel like they're part of a cause or part of mm. some small sure. group or a group that's fighting for something. But they need to kind of step back and be like, what are we doing? What are we really fighting for? Can I use my time in a more productive way, perhaps? Or perhaps they really wholeheartedly believe the things that they're fighting for on Twitter, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, it makes no difference to me. It makes no difference to yeah. the other people that they try to bring down because, um, well, we're not going anywhere. Right. And those are not I the people I, we do uh, it for. Sure. I guess for me, I just wonder, like, what's the difference, I guess, from the Marvel fan base and the Star Wars fan base? Because this doesn't seem to be... I think Marvel's more happy. Yeah, that's what I mean is like that doesn't seem yeah. to be a thing in Marvel. Like sometimes I'll get pushback when I like talk negatively about a Disney Plus show. Like it's definitely happened because I'm, I, you know, like I'm pretty critical about stuff. Right? right. So like a lot of phase four was like, you know, not that great. Um, 
but like bro it's not the same like people aren't trying to mischaracterize people it's like people aren't trying to go super hard on it and people aren't thinking that i'm acting in bad faith like people literally think you're acting in bad faith which i think yeah. is really crazy especially if, it, if they've ever watched any of your videos like you know that is just that's like the opposite of you i don't you know what i mean like you and i don't always agree but i've never thought like your shit was in bad faith right and so it's really weird that all of these people i guess i'm just curious like what is the difference is it just that marvel wins a little bit more and therefore there's less kind of animus there or i don't know I'm, I'm not sure where it really comes from um that's not for me to decide but at the end of the day it's quite irrelevant because i'm just here for you know we, we have three thousand over three thousand people watching live right now star wars is pretty slow and that's a lot of people just hanging out with us you know and for a show that we have built over time and I'm really appreciative of the people who are here and the people who watch the videos and buy the merch and everything else. Um, without them, I wouldn't be here. So those are the ones I care about. You know, the ones right. who want to brand you as something or brand me as something or whatever. Well, that's on them, bro. Like, <clears throat> that, that doesn't matter to me. I don't, I don't waste my time on that anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, and, and there will all, yeah. that will never stop. The bigger you get, the more that will be. True. Yeah, I guess I think my... I just my notion of this is that it's probably because a Marvel sort of has a better uh let's say track record with their fans. I mean they're not flawless yeah. but they've done, you know, kind of better for longer. Mm -hmm. And then probably also that Marvel Studios has not they haven't done the same thing that Star Wars did especially in the early days of Disney which was really kind of participate in some of that like online chatter bullying segregating you know all yep. that sort of stuff so yeah you, I, you remember yeah. andy gutierrez with the luke fanboy tears cup yeah like we, you would you never would see like iron man fanboy tears or like screw iron never. man like coming never. out of it what was something honest, in marvel that fanboys were really mad about what was something like so um, the boner when they brought in ralph boner in wandavision and sort of like played with us thinking it was like fox x-man thing and then he ended up just literally being named ralph boner like that that triggered a lot of people um i'd say maybe the mandarin like the og mandarin thing like that in iron man 3 when you make it that weird guy instead of actually the mandarin but then they kind of write that wrong in shang chi right oh. um so there have definitely been things with marvel and there are even things kevin feige has said that like rub me the wrong way sometimes but it doesn't feel like that's all he's saying do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, he says a lot of shit that's like, I'm like, yo, that's hype. That's awesome. Like, I get it. So, there have been things, though. No, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, Star Wars, is a, it's a very different IP, and with that, we'll probably garner a different uh, fan base. So, Yeah, it's a little also, more... You don't, you don't see, like, you don't see, you know, The Last Jedi, I think, really changed everything for fans. You know, we don't really have, like, a Marvel movie that did that. That's true. She Hulk is the closest thing, and Love and Thunder was buttholes, but it feels inconsequential. It's not like Love and Thunder was like, this is the, the Marvel story. It's like, no, this is some weird adventure Thor's having, and it was whack. Yeah. Right. So, like, yeah, Star Wars sort of suffers in that sense where it's like, this is Star Wars. And it's like, that's this is Star Wars, right? So, yeah. Well, Josh, why don't you ask this question to our good buddy Hannah? Let's hey, do Hannah. that. Hannah, what's G'day up? G'day there. What's How's it going? Up? How are you doing? It's going very well. It's a very warm day here in Australia. It's, uh, it's a good time. Good to be on the show. Yeah, yeah. glad to have oh, you. It's be good. Glad to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a good time. So what do you, did you, yeah. did you finish Andor? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Finished Andor. Oh, yeah. You like it? How could you? Yeah, I did. I, I had yeah. mixed uh, takes on some of the pacing, and I think there was things that was missed out of Andor that we, we could have gotten. I'm... I think I will forever be salty that we didn't get this awesome dinner party scene uh, at Mon yeah. Mothma's place. With, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's so weird that they dangled that and then it never happens. Yeah. Like, it, it was almost built like that was going to be quite a crescendo kind of mid-season. But, yeah. yeah, we never got that. So a little salty over that, but, like, literally everything else I really enjoyed. Just, like, the overall aesthetic of the show. Perfect. Yeah. Really, really good. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Nice. I like everything, nice. too. Except for, you know, the bricks yeah. and the... the yeah, the bricks and screws really kill. Bricks and screws really. You know what? 
I'm I'm glad we're bringing this up because I've got something to say on this. Oh, I've sure. got Here something go. to say. You ready? I've, and I've got props. Yeah. I've got props. Oh, okay. 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 To explain. Okay. To explain. Crazy. All right. So, <laughs> so my when I'm not doing this, when I'm on YouTube and content yeah. creating, uh, I work in props. Uh, I make props. I I studied. I've studied how to make things for many many years. And cool. for over a decade, I've studied how, how Star Wars makes what's in their movies and shows. So yeah. I, I, I'm I kind of neutral on the brick stuff. Uh, bricks are bricks. They're going to be in Star Wars whether you like it or not. Bricks yeah. are bricks. Uh, but the screws, I, I have something to say. So here are two different types of screws. Yeah. So there's, there's many different types of screws. So this screw... Is a, is a like a classic screw. So this is called a flathead screw. This is what you can buy in like any hardware. You can go down to any hardware store and you can buy this kind of screw. And you, you find it in like every piece of furniture or like, you know, just any kind of electronic device. You'll, yeah. you'll find this. But this other screw is called an internal hex screw. I like so that this one. Screw, you, yeah. Is there a difference? What would you say? Which one's going to be in Star Wars? The, uh, one. the second one. Yeah, the one you just one? Oh, the one, yeah. yeah, that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so this is an internal hex screw. So this screw is found in like the, the internal parts of like computers and like, you know, uh, really advanced like technology, like you find it inside. Um, and this screw is really what they use heavily on sci-fi movies and shows and because it is less familiar. Because to make something kind of out of this world, out of the, you know, in a different galaxy, in a different time, in a different space, it has to be as less familiar as possible. So we're really familiar with how this looks. We see it everywhere. We Anyone that doesn't know anything about building will know this. But yeah. this is a little less familiar. So right. this looks more plausible to be out of this world and in a different universe and in a different, like, like just space. Yeah. So, like, if you, like, if you need, you need to watch the ILM documentary. If, if anyone in the chat hasn't watched that ILM documentary on Disney Plus, it is phenomenal. And I think they even like touch on this because obviously Star Wars, you know, original trilogy, they they built everything from things that exist and they piece it together to make yeah. it look like something else. Or the ships, yeah. or the you know control boards, or things like that. And it's little tiny details like this, not using something super familiar, but using something that isn't familiar. That makes it look more Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So that's what mm -hmm. I've got to say about the screw conversation. So, right? Are yeah. you ready that's, to that's now be vilified and be dragged I'm all canceled. over social media? If it's over screws, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right on. If it, yeah, um, it's fine. It's fine. No, I like that. I like that yeah, take, and I think that's that's, that's well said for sure. I want to check out that documentary as well because I mean, dude, like. Mm. When Theory made his rebuttal video, I thought it was perfect because he's literally like walking you through the process of like, he's making a film right now. He's working with people that have done Star Wars before. And so these are things that are on his mind. And so it's something that just stuck up. It's like that reticular activating system. Like, you know, when you buy a new car and then you start seeing that model all over. Um, and I felt like it was oh, yeah. so harmless what he said. Yeah. Why do you think, Hannah? I was because like, you know, well, it was I'm in a live stream jaded. too. It was just died. Yeah. All right. It's crazy. Like, so, like, what's your take on why people got so uh, triggered by it, Hannah? Uh, people like to be triggered. People like to be triggered. They, they, they like to have something to, to say. Um, and I think also context is such a big thing these days. And I think that's the issue. Um, like, whether or not, like, you know, if it was on anything else, whether or not someone agreed or disagreed, I think the fact that it was just so out of context, like it was like 45 minutes of theory, you explaining like how and was pretty good and, you know, things like, but it was like great and you enjoyed it so much. And then like, it was actually just, I, I can't wrap my head around how phenomenal it was that people heard this like two sentences and was like, yeah, that's, yeah, he hates the, the whole thing. Like that's it, like, yeah. I, I actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't comprehend it to be honest. But um, right, I but think, that's yeah, like, context, so, context is the big yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so you're saying that people like to be triggered. I actually agree with you. I think there's a lot of that out there, and maybe people mm. can't even differentiate, like, oh, I just like dopamine or whatever, right? Um, mm, sure. But do you think that this is something unique to Star Wars? Because 
it feels kind of unique to the Star Wars fandom to me. And I'm just curious, like your thoughts mm. on that. Are you in other fandoms? Because I mean, like look behind you and it's like, that's a lot of Star Wars. Mm. It's it's a lot of Star Wars. Yeah, well, I'm kind of, uh, I don't want to say unique, but it, you know, a lot of people kind of cross over the other fandoms, but I really have zero interest in anything else. I've seen like one Marvel movie in my lifetime and like, I really don't watch anything else or like anything else. So I I don't have a good perspective of like comparing it to the other fandoms, but mm. this being the only fandom I've been a part of, like it has gone through many phases and waves of transformation. Like why when I entered the fandom, I was like age 10. So yeah. like 2010 and, you know, prequels were the thing to hate. That was the thing to just go, they're so cr- shit. They're so awfully made. They look crap. Like that was the thing to hate. But, you know, fast forward 12 years, 13 years later, like mm. now it's prequels are really revered. So I, th- I think the fandom has taken so many. You see in oh, the no. Disney era, you know, there's, there's so much more to uh, criticize and, and have opinions on. Do you think mm. this could happen with the sequel trilogy that in like, 12, 13 years that everyone will be like, you know what? They're so great. We're so happy they're back. Like we want them. We want more of them. Mm. Yeah. That uh, you think uh, like have? absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. I, I think it's going to take the ex- almost the exact same progression as the prequels did. I think it will be. And it's not that people, which I don't think it's like people who don't like it will change their mind or vice versa. I don't think it will be, you know, it might be some people have that. But I think the main thing is the kids that like the, the, the people under 10 that grew up, you know, with the sequel trilogy being like that trilogy of their generation, mm. I think will grow up to be, you know, 16, 17, 18, mm. you know, into their 20s and then and really revere that nostalgia. Because, you know, critically, I could be like, oh, yeah, the prequels, you know, there's kind of things that lack or whatever. But but it's hard for me to say anything negative about the prequels because it's all nostalgia it's full of nostalgia and that good feeling for like me as a fan so i think that'll definitely have the same treatment to the sequel trilogy that i think that channel kind of yeah that younger generation that grew up watching that and that's their introduction will will kind of have a lot more of a voice i think so too i just think that there are so many more people nowadays that are younger that like we're, like were our age josh when we saw the prequels um that didn't like they even say that I didn't really like the sequels all that much. Yeah, like that's if, kind if of where I'm leading. Be, yeah. yeah, like so I'm I'm mm. curious to see like when they're adults, like when they're Hannah's age, like what are they going to what are they gonna like is it gonna be yeah. how we're thinking or I think kids today are way different mostly because of social media. Like when yeah. you and mm. I were uh, you know, watching these movies, we would just watch them and then like our own like I didn't really look. Yeah, it's like I lived in that space of like really liking it and feeling like I'm just there. And I didn't have like social media or like Reddit or all these different things. And I think that uh, it's very possible that kids because I just have this feeling and maybe it's it's just a notion. Like, I don't know if I could like prove this or whatever. But my notion is that one of the big problems Star Wars currently has is that it's actually not resonating with young people like very well at all. So my thing is like, I think kids or young people that watch the sequel trilogy, they grew up in just a totally different environment. And I don't think the internet was very kind to the sequels. So I don't know how much nostalgia they're actually going to have for it moving forward. I Mm -hmm. think if, I think like maybe if you skip a couple generations and people come at it like without any of that baggage they could maybe derive a lot more enjoyment from it but uh yeah i don't know like i i would love for that to be the case and for star wars to sort of persist that way generationally but um guess we'll see you know give it time time will tell yeah because our strength of the sequels i think for a younger generation is the thrill colorful it was kind of uh very very vibrant like in you know yeah. if we take in maybe in comparison to well the prequels are pretty vibrant but in terms of just that you know it had it had that newer quality and was really really colorful and like lots of bright lights fast yeah. scenes i think that 
will kind of really catch the eye of young kids. Well, I but, think uh, yeah. the force awakens certainly had that. Right. Cause like, mm -hmm. and I think that's why it's so big was like, it was essentially rebooting episode four with new characters. And like, it was polished to hell. Like the special effects looked unbelievable to this day. Yeah. I still remember the first time I saw that fa the Falcon scene on Jakku with Ray and Finn and like, experiencing that like winding yeah through that, that was pretty shot. good yeah it was a, it was fantastic i was like dude this is really really cool um and then i kind of feel like yeah they still had that aesthetic in the last jedi but i think like i don't know like i feel like the, the last jedi is like this wildly different movie <laughs> than uh you know force awakens i don't know if we mm. had that in the prequels the prequels at least all feel like they belong together and you know, they feel cohesive, mm. even if you don't like yeah, their style cool. or you don't like what they're trying to do. Like they feel consistent. So, yeah, there mm, was a plan, sure. right? Which mm -hmm. with the sequels. Mm. But yeah. Did you like the sequels? I mean, I assume since it's the race side. It's uh, what the what, the race has just been last name. Everyone thinks it's like because of Ray, but the race oh. has just been last name. Oh, uh, mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, well, yes. Yeah, I did, Good. but also there, there's some incredibly major gaping holes of story continuing con continuity that lacks the sequels. Yeah. Yeah. That that is a really major thing. But yeah, enjoyment level like fairly high, like Great. critical level fairly mid low. Yeah, mm, yeah, that's fair. Oh, good. Well, I'm mm. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, Josh, his favorite mm. film was The Last Jedi, so. Josh, we can. I think. I think the bricks are gone now. We can kill it. Or, the bricks going uh, down. I think kill the bricks. Disappeared. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh I think there's some god. screws back there, though. I'm not sure. Let me see here. <laughs> None. Okay. Boom. Boom. Shakalaka. Uh, dude, I I just remember being really confused the last the first time I watched the Last Jedi. I will say this: I had a good experience in the theater, and I had a lot of um, I had a lot of fun, just like experiencing Star Wars being really relevant. And like having those movies kind of cap the holiday season and continuing to like go in there and watch those films then. Like I had a lot of good experience with it's like what got the homies together, you know, and went and saw them. So like I enjoyed a lot of my time during the sequels like era. It really was like kind of rise and then slowly like letting it all sink in that really negatively affected my perception of them and i think one of the things that really hurt it for me was the skywalker saga like bro that was never a thing until like nine months away from rise and then they sort of hedged their bets by saying this was the end cap of this entire thing right um mm. and i felt like it was purely a gimmick that they had turned yeah. star wars from like a thriving awesome thing into this thing that like they were so nervous about that like they had to have a gimmick to get people in there and that's kind of like mm. what broke my disillusion with kind of everything that disney was doing but i did have a lot of good experiences throughout the uh throughout the whole sequel thing so like i feel you hannah like i had some straight straight up fun times watching those films so mm. so yeah. do we have any news going forward for today to talk about Gosh, did you hear anything? There's, there's so I'll really say this. Things. This is kind of fun. On Thursday, there's a uh, thing in Brazil called CCXP. And it's like a big convention. It's like San Diego Comic-Con for Brazil. And it's actually like it's getting bigger and bigger every year. Brazil Brazilian nerds are, are awesome. Um, and so there will be a Lucasfilm panel this Thursday. I think it starts at 2.30 in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. um, and they will probably go over mando 3 and maybe a little more ahsoka tease and uh i just for me personally i am so excited to be getting into 2023 to be getting past mm. andor which obviously people know how i feel about andor um and to be looking forward to like the more mythic side of star wars the force the mandalorian you know all of these kind of fun things so i'm hella excited for thursday and it, it feels like sort of a turning of a page into uh 2023 and all the dope content that should be coming yeah, so I'm I think excited for that, year, dude. I, I agree, man. I think next year is going to be wild for Star Wars. I, you know, we got we got Bad Batch, Mando, Ahsoka. Um, we got the, the Skeleton the Crew. Order game. 
Skeleton, Skeleton Crew coming next year? Skeleton Crew is, from what I understand, it, it is shooting now. I don't know that it would drop next year. It depends. It could. It absolutely could. It would huh. it would be like a third or fourth quarter probably. So they could put, mm. uh, you know, they could put Ahsoka a little bit up and then do that. And I think that would be fantastic. Um, mm. But Star Wars in production is a little tricky. So I think it's know. wild that we're getting Bad Batch, Mandalorian Season 3, and um, Jedi Survivor <laughs> within like, what, four months? It's like, Yeah, it's all yeah. going to be basically in a quarter, yeah. Are they still doubling down on releasing Mando with Bad Batch? From what I, I understand, don't think so. I think, yeah. I th really? I, th I thought it got so? pushed no, back. Yeah, you would probably know. Yeah. Because I, I think the like the official Mando Twitter, I think, had in their bio like February 2023. And then yeah. it was around where all the date changes of, of Andor and Bad Batch, all the date changes there, they, they removed February right, from their that. bio. And it's just 2023. Yeah. And, I th and so I think now it's rumored maybe around... Uh, right? I think they're uh, yeah hoping for a celebration release, kind of yeah. like Kenobi, which you know. Oh, fair. okay, so they would kind of win the yeah. celebration. Would that be like May time? Or? May, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, think that would good. make sense. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. I guess it, we'll, is it May? We'll probably or do or it on April? Thursday. On. Let me let me see this. I feel like it's end of April. I think it would be good for them to sort of clarify that this Thursday and kind of. Nice, what? You know, that's that's one some... thing I don't like. The constant, like, oh, is this coming? Is this really coming now? Or are they going to, like, flip it back? Yeah, well, months? they just like, have I, no confidence. I, I never know. In... I never know. <laughs> I know. It's very difficult. And I think I've been personally really frustrated with their sort of lack of just info and, like, talking about their, their dope stuff. And, like, you know, as we talked about, I think, a couple of weeks back, that seems to be a Disney thing. Like, they came to Kathy and basically were like, yo – we're getting a lot of bad press because a lot of the shit you talk about doesn't happen. So stop talking about stuff. And what that mm -hmm. created was just to me, even a worse vibe of like hide the movie, hide the show, you know, like it's just, I don't know, like uh, mm -hmm. tough, tough, tough for me as a fan. Cause like, I want them to be confident with their shit and be like, Oh, here's all the awesome stuff we have coming out uh, and get us excited about it. But yeah, we, we really don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I'll put it like this. I, I I would prefer if they were confident and it was a it was a bad not bad but not, it didn't hit as well of a piece of media than them be underconfident and it be good. If that makes any sense. Try you me again because I, mean? I, I was kind of with you. Say it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would prefer them to be confident and the show or movie doesn't hit than them right. be underconfident and it does hit. Sure. Well, yeah. because at least like a part of that is getting excited and hyped up about it. Right. Cause like Marvel mm. basically runs almost all on hype, like especially right now, like in the dark times, mm. it's like the hype of all these cool things just kind of fuels the fandom. And we get really excited about all the possibilities and star Wars used to be like that. Like literally before the last Jedi, like, there were so like remember Ray's staff and shit like just talking. Oh, about dude, all yeah, yeah. This things? is like Plagueis' stick or something Bro, like that. Like that yeah. was the best. Like, yeah, that was, was the best the time. Best, it was the best, was the best. time. Um, mm. and so now their yeah. attitude of it is so, it doesn't allow for any of that. You know what I mean? And mm. and so I think if they were to share more stuff and put more hype out there i think it would be great I, I think maybe when we get a little closer to mandalorian some of that stuff could leak out and there could be some you know speculation about what exactly is going to happen but uh to me that's what that's what really fuels good fandom and good conversations is now there is a robot what's going on here oh my god are you a robot uh, b2 is that you b2 to, i'm wondering why it's doing that face right now. oh yeah with the square thing yeah, I think it's your autofocus. It's the setting on your autofocus. It, that's never happened before. Yeah. I still, I still can't get over how I, how it looked like I hacked the show. Like that, that oh, the other day or the other week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, was incredible. Hilarious. That was literally that, one that of those. I was laughing. So I felt cool. bad. Yeah. I felt so bad. No, you did great. Like, oh. You did great. And also the Australian accent helps a lot. I watch a lot of Australian YouTubers. Have you ever heard of Major yeah. Kill? He does I Warhammer don't, I don't think I have. He I literally have, would yeah. title his videos like this piece of lore explained by an Australian. And it's like a part of his. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah that alone great. gets people. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that. Totally.
totally. yeah, for sure. So I was for like, sure. at least we've got, yeah, it's like we've got a girl with an Australian accent that can actually fill dead air. This is perfect. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, well, it's because because my that's my usual thing is just talking to the camera itself. So, I'm I'm used to it. I'm used to just going crazy in the corner of my room, being like, "Yes, yeah, Star Wars, man." So, <laughs> I was uh, I've been training. I'm good. There you go. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try to find that question again that just popped up for you. But okay, well, anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it. Uh, where is it? Question for Hannah: How does it feel to basically become an overnight celebrity in this community from the stream? Has it affected you daily, your daily life in any way? <laughs> Keep going. It. It's has it affected my daily life? Your daily yeah, life. Right. Like are, you, are you having to wear sunglasses what? in How public? It... Yeah, you, I'm uh, wearing hats yeah. outside. Hats, I can't yeah. hoods. The whole thing. Uh, even mm -hmm. the kangaroos now are recognized. Dude, me. I literally almost they're, said they're that. Going out to me. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're I was got literally me, about so... to say even the kangaroos are, and then I what thought it was life. actually yeah. a little racist, and I was like, I'm not going to say that. She's getting deals from Lucasfilm. <laughs> oh no but it, yeah it was good it was, it was pretty freaky it was so random because like i can't emphasize how much of a fluke it was like i was genuinely just folding washing and then you guys were just like oh we'll put up the link and i'm like wouldn't it be funny wouldn't it be funny if i got on the show so i just yeah. like ironically put in like the 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 um the code and then yeah to get on was so funny i was like wow this day took a really good turn. i think i, I, think I said that, that. was so good yeah funny. i was like oh man yeah you you it's were like, oh, okay, yours was the man. only one that was working mm -hmm. yeah which i like <laughs> it definitely looked like i hacked it it absolutely <laughs> looked like i hacked it it was, <laughs> well, it was hilarious yeah you, know, you did a good job and yeah i mean you held the fort down a little bit yeah um it. so i got um, one more question for you what do you want to see going forwards? Like, what's the one thing that you would like to see? And it, it could, it doesn't even have to be content wise. It could be game, could be movies. I mean, it could be books. Um, mm. Jesus. Uh, I actually, to be honest, I, know, right? I think, yeah, jeez. Yeah. I think I would have to say New Republic content. Okay. Uh, so e even in the, like the Mandoverse, maybe just past the Mandoverse, Mm -hmm. um i think the new republic is a really fascinating thing because you know they're trying to kind of come out of the collapse of the empire and build up and lay like lay is a really big player in that mm -hmm. time period yeah, I've, I've just read through bloodline mm -hmm. um which is like of that era and it was just yep. so fascinating so so fan fascinating and you know i i like i very much like the senate and political star wars yeah. and, in in terms of the senate so yeah just just more how the the galaxy is governed post empire yeah. i'll I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd just yeah whether it's like a show or a movie i'd be down for that yeah, yeah that'd really, be cool. i'm really interested in that kind of stuff too that's what i wanted to yeah. see more in andor with like more of the politics in the yes. senate yeah mm -hmm. i was hoping for I, that i feel like they did a good job mm -hmm. with the idea that the senate doesn't really have a place anymore like there weren't weren't many seats filled and no one really cared for what mon mothma was speaking of and but i would have liked to see more of like the opposition in the, in the terms of like Sly Moore showing up or Masamita and kind of yeah, sure. telling her, you know, politically, like, no, you, this is not going to work because of this and this. And I think that would have been pretty neat, mm. but maybe we'll see more of that in season two. I think season two would be probably much more interesting for me, um, mm. unless they have, you know, bricks and screws. But I think we'll see Krennic, Tarkin. Um, I don't know about Palpatine or any of those guys, but I think with the time jumps that they'll have, we'll probably see a lot more of the characters from Rogue One, like Galen Urso. Yeah. I think that'd be neat mm. to yeah, see dude. what he was going yeah, through. Yeah. Um, I, I'd be shocked if they didn't have Krennic or Urso in it. I'd be yeah. very shocked if they didn't do that. Krennic was yeah. rumored to be in the first season. That just, dude, that didn't, that never, yeah, I remember that never rumor. happened. Yeah. yeah. I remember I that like rumor. So yeah. many people were rumored. I feel like so many characters. Yeah. Well, like, there were a lot yeah. of people rumored like very far out, but then like when as the show got closer, like everything that I was hearing was like nothing. I was like nothing, mm -hmm. and people were like, "Yeah, dude, nothing." And I was like, "Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah. here we go." Um, Melchi was nice say, though. Who was? Melchi. Melchi, it was like you know Cassian's mate. Well, who was? Wait, that, Cassian's buddy the, in the Rogue One. What, what? what am I saying this incorrectly, Melchi? 
<laughs> is it? Oh, right. Where, where he was running with him at the yeah. end. Yeah, yeah. Cassian's buddy that he was in Rogue yeah. One. He was yes. he was the guy that was yeah. like on Scarif in Rogue One. And what episode yeah. was this in? That he this was, was in? when they escaped the prison, and then they were together when he when. He oh, really? Because that's like one of the episodes wow. I watched. I don't really remember. It was right at the end. They escaped okay. together, and they were like running through the 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 hills. He was like the... in the prison with him for a bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, I said something on uh, my stream earlier that like, I'm sure some people will be aghast to hear, but uh, I actually think Indoor Season Two could be much better and like much more my speed. You know? Yeah, me too. Because it's it's supposed to be in f either three or I think three arcs, right? Mm -hmm. So they're doing like four episode arcs, and then there's a big time jump like in between them, and so they're the like they're it's almost like three little shows. Yeah. Um, and I think that that kind of stuff could be much better. It's also like it's got to be more intense as far as actually building up the rebellion. You know what I mean? So I think you put that together, maybe you sprinkle in a few cool characters and I might end up liking uh Andor two a lot more than I liked uh, the first one. Well, I'm curious to see what happens with Mon Mothma now that she's sold out her daughter. <laughs> oh, so yeah. weird. Oh God. Yeah. But oh, she was geez. down for like, the, uh, it was so weird that, that she was wanting that. Well, I think that's the gravity when, of it. Like when, that's yeah. When they were like chanting like, the the whatever the cult, I'm like this is so yeah, weird. Yeah, that was weird. I didn't I didn't get that part. Um, but I think that's the gravity of the situation. I think because it's like to her, it's so immoral. Like she was yeah. so distraught the idea of giving her away in marriage. But like yeah. that's like she'll literally be like, you know what? That I got to do it for the rebellion. It's like Bonhoeffer yeah. is like the most hardcore like re rebel <laughs> the whole of star wars at the moment she is like and then yeah. she just i, yeah, I she... think it was to show her strength yeah hmm. yeah i guess and i mean if that's what her daughter wants I mean, <laughs> she seemed very like this is my husband it was just weird weird scenario but yeah they and the serial guy what yeah, a creep I don't get that. What yeah a... they that was Mothra weird seem really gray you know what i mean like morally that's that's kind of weird yeah like i'm surprised he's not canceled <laughs> dude mm. he's weird. Oh, he's, the, weird he's the king sim dude weird yeah, but he was like yeah tracking her down at work and like those are things that you just don't do like you get the mm. cops yeah. called on you if you do something like a restraining order like that's you just no it's he's it's weird he's the, maybe one of the weirdest star wars characters ever written he is literally just a stalker simp uh yeah just mm. really strange cat you think they made out a strange cat Did you say a strange cat Yes, well, that's a, a expression over here in the civilized world. Is that an expression? Hannah. Yes, <laughs> you guys call people no, cats. We, we don't got that those nature. cats down here. Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. A strange, a strange cat. Strange dingo. Yeah. Yeah. There, there we go. Dingo. That's yeah, now I understand dingo. that part. I, yeah. 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 There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll funny. see. Maybe maybe they end up being together in season two. Who knows? <laughs> maybe they're a power couple. What if the whole thing starts and they're like <laughs> a power couple? You know what I mean? And like doing their thing. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, they become uh, the the Rocket League or whatever from Pokemon. They just need an actual yeah. cat. They yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that so, is yeah. so good. It. Then they'll have a strange cat. Oh, what I was their chance? Uh, That's good. I think they might juice up season two as well because it kind of seems like even Tony Gilroy is kind of saying like. You know, season two is going to really, really pop. And I think Lucasfilm would be wise to uh, do that, you know, just based on like viewership numbers and like fan response. Like, I think they should juice that shit up. Like, they're shooting it right now. And uh, if I were them, I would just kind of be a little more assertive of like, you know, mm -hmm. what if we had some really cool stuff for the fans in here? You know, like, don't go full rock. You know what I mean? But like, try mm -hmm. to give the fans just a little bit. You know it's what I mean? I. You haven't seen Black Adam? No, yes, I still haven't seen Black Adam. It's on digital now. Is it? Mm hmm. On what? Digital. Prime? Like, yeah, it's like everywhere. It's like wherever you buy it. You know, like oh. they have the thing where you buy it for 20 bucks and then you can, a couple weeks later, you can rent it or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Dude, Black Adam's not bad. Like, it's oh, yeah, not, I, I want to see know, it. Gone with the Wind or anything, but like, it's, well, it's not supposed it's to be. Good. It's a comic book. Yeah. Yeah, smash, smash. I'm, it's interesting that he's now in comic book, that he's now in the DC. I wonder, you know, he has a lot of pull. So you know, he he got Henry Cavill, and I can't believe he did that. It's crazy, but Henry Cavill might just continue in DC, and Rock might be out. Oh no! <laughs> like that could literally happen because now James Gunn is running everything, right? And right. Yeah, we'll see. That's why. Who would be who would be the James Gunn to run Star Wars? Oh, like, it's who? Dave. Dave is the James Gunn. So yeah, 
yeah, but James Gunn is paired with Peter Safran, who is like a producer, producer and like a Hollywood guy. So like Safran's the suit. And the story is that when Zasloff approached Safran, he wanted Safran to just run the whole thing. And Safran was like, no, you need someone that's creative. So like he actually got James in on it, which was really wild. So now they have like the suit and the business mind. And then James, who's just like pure creative. Cool. Uh, and they're hashing it out together right now. Oh, to be a fly on the wall of like the meetings they're having right now, bro. Yeah. Like, oh, be really cool. But yeah. So Dave away. would be James. But you haven't heard of this either? Huh, I, I, I've only barely heard that one. What it's all the, all the animal metaphors. Jeez. <laughs> we do make a lot of animal Well, well we have animal to make up for it. Because we, we, we don't get eaten by spiders. We don't have any. Yeah, yeah, we don't have, don't have that many animals. <laughs> yeah, we actually have to hunt here for conservation because we've killed all a... the natural predators. So <laughs> That's kind of low-key true, well, Hannah. Like, <laughs> sure. we, we took all the... Like, where I'm at right now... Trust me. Like, yeah. We don't have like eight foot long spiders or whatever you guys have. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, we don't joke. That's why we don't joke about animals. That's why yeah, I don't get it. If only I could be a spider yeah. on the wall. Well, yeah, there we. Yeah, there. There, I can understand <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No thanks. Um. Okay. Well, Hannah, we're gonna get to reading super chats. So if you want to come on next week, like, let me know. We'd love to have you chat. Would you yeah, spam sure, spam? Uh, H for Hannah if you want to see Hannah next week or maybe a little more regular and um it will if, be my birthday she's down next for that, week we though can... and oh. so you will have to uh that... give me a present uh, yeah I'll I'll, I'll I'll do that it'll be an Australian present though like a giant <laughs> insect or yeah yeah, yeah that's what yeah okay Big it's gonna your face and all right let's let's roll with the let's punches it. open yeah, it up live brain. Yeah. <laughs> wow, what a gift. <laughs> oh, God, I'm dead yeah, now. Yeah. That'll be it. That'll be it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Great. Well, uh, well, thank you for having me on. Of it's course. A, if it, you want to shout out your socials? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. it's at the Ray side, uh, the R-A-E side. And again, it's not specifically Ray. I do like Ray, but Ray side is just my last name. Uh, so it's either the light side, the dark side, or choose the Ray side. Uh, so you can find me there on Instagram, Twitter, and obviously YouTube at the Ray side. Good times. Cool. All right, Let guys. Thank you so much. There. Thank you. I'll catch you next we'll, time. We'll catch you next time. Take care. See ya. I like her. She's cool. Yeah. Good perspective yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, chat. Yeah. We appreciate you guys always welcoming new people on. And uh, yeah, Hannah seems like someone that will be coming around a lot more. So that's great. Um, yes. Now let's get to our, let's read some soupies. Read some soupies. Soup it up. Um, is it your birthday on Monday? Yeah, how crazy is like that? Like the next actual Monday. stream? Like this is my actual birthday next Monday, yeah. Okay, chat. So uh, Josh and I have an agreement that like whenever it's our birthdays and if our if our birthday falls on the actual um, thing, we have a, a different split for the Super Chat. So Josh will be getting... I don't remember what the split was, but you're going to have to remind me. I'll tell you. Yeah, You'll yeah. tell me, yeah. So, I've got a document <laughs> from so, your so, birthday. So, I was like watching the like, Super Chats coming like... <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, so next week, guys, like you know, send your birthday wishes and super chats to Josh, and so he can uh, buy Liam more uh, diapers. Yeah, you don't have to go crazy, guys. It'll just be cool to stream with. No, them anyways. No, they do. Well, I mean, you could go a little crazy. They but, do. You know, it's it's also the holiday season and all that kind of stuff. I uh, I'm looking forward to it, dude. I think it's gonna be a fun ass stream. I might uh, even have a couple of drinks. Um, oh, cool. So yeah, it should be fun time. Should be cool. Nice, sick. I'm still scrolling, so oh, here we go. Okay, keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. What's up, nerds? Hope you guys are doing well. Let's have an awesome Monday night. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Brad. Pretty chill of you to say. Doth <laughs> moth, uh, theory Q. Would you take job as Disney CEO at a seventy-five million dollars a year salary, but with absolutely no creative power, control, influence, but had undisputed, maxed-out veto power. Josh, same question for you, but with Marvel. That's an yes. interesting one. Yeah. Yes, of so course. So you would just veto the bad shit and just I try to just keep them on track. Veto everything until they come to the shit that I think is great. Yeah, I would I would say so too, but the only problem I think with that is that 
I do think some of the issues that are happening with Marvel and Star Wars right now are happening from a creative perspective. Like it's in the writer's room. Right. And so, yeah, veto. you could veto bad ideas until the right. cows come home. But yep. like, I just want to get, I want to get the bad people out of the writer's room. Do well, you know what I mean? If these are the rules that I have unlimited veto power, but I can't have any sort of creative power control, it'll literally just be the process of elimination. So they'll keep coming to me with ideas and I'll be like, nope. Nope. Sure. I'm like, ah, I like sure. this. And then over time, they'll probably understand what's going to get vetoed or and what won't. And then they'll sure. only start yeah. to bring me a shift in ideas. I like it. I think it's a cool question. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's fun. So thank you, man. Obviously awesome. hate your profile picture, but you know. I'd make good. Vader episode two, three, four, five, ten. True. Well, you could just. I guess you couldn't really just do it because no. then you don't have creative. Yeah. But as a fan, as a fan project, I can do whatever I want. True. So I'm not making money from it. True. YouTube's still hiding my boys. Shame on them. YouTube is weird. I feel like this might be one of the weirdest years on YouTube. It's just the worst. All the changes they've made. It's the worst. It's really weird. Worst. Yeah. What kind of Jedi would Luke be in the prequel trilogy? Would he be in the council? Join Dooku? Agree to train Anakin. Oh, um, he'd probably be with Mace. Like, kind of by the books, you mean? Yeah, I feel the same way. I, I feel mean, like, like he's he... got a lot of his mother's like duty order. You know, yeah, yeah. like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I agree. yeah. So, you know, um, it's not until Legends that he actually changes a little bit. So, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Good question. Good question. Are there any blacked out hoodies left? I tried to order one a couple of days ago and it canceled my order. Yeah, Maul, I um a few days ago I spoke to it was yesterday. I spoke to them and they should be restocking everything. So it should be good to go. If you want to grab one, go grab one now because they are I've never had merch sell this fast. So please Grab one now while you can. Once they're gone, I'm never going to have these again. This is like a special raised um, embroidery that I had to order special for this, just for this mm. launch. So it's not like a regular thing that Teespring or Spring offers. But I appreciate you trying to grab one, man. Hopefully you still get one. Yeah. All the hate they gave, you got me bricked up. Dog, I thrive on negativity. Matter of fact, I think they got a few screws loose. We got your backs, brother. Thanks, Brad. Nice, Brad. Well done. Appreciate it, man. Kara Black, very generous, $20, says, the planet you saw the Death Star orbiting in Andor is actually Scarif because that's where it was moved from Geonosis during later stages of production. This has been canon for years and was also covered in Rebels Season 2. Interesting. Right, thanks, Kara. Interesting. And so you have a Sith there. Indeed. From the old republic, yes. Don't break up. We'll be better, fans. We promise. What? <laughs> Just Mansplain is coming <laughs> back. You better be ready. Oh, Did you ever snap. leave? Yeah, I know, right? What do you mean coming back? Bro? Yeah, what do you mean? You never left. What do you mean? Thanks, man. Don't call it a comeback. Hey, guys, who wins? No weapons. Savajo Press. Oh, it's dude, it's Kersantan. What? What? You don't think Kersantan would handle Savage? He has the force. Hmm, true. But it's doesn't Kersantan have like all these implants that make it really hard for Jedi to kill him? Like, doesn't he have something in his throat? Okay, first of all, Savage is pretty huge. He's massive. Second of all, but only because of the magic. Yeah, second of all, he's still huge. Second yeah. of all, he uh he uses the force. That's true, but Kersantan is natty. He's not, well, actually, he's not. Not natty, really. He's neither of them. Neither <laughs> yeah, neither they're both of them enhanced as hell. Yeah, yeah, true. They're both enhanced as hell. It'd be a really good fight. It'd be a good fight. Jen says, hey, guys, Theory, watched Bleach yet? I actually, mm -hmm. oh, no, that wasn't. I was going to say, I asked him about that earlier, but I didn't. Uh, I looked it up, and it's 150 uh, episodes of filler. That's actually true. You can skip all of that filler, bro. Like, I think they have four separate filler <laughs> arcs, and it was, it's pretty fucking wild, bro. Uh, You're really keep selling the show until right you watch now. it. Oh, no, no, no. Show. But just, what that means is, like, if you look at the episode count, cut 150 episodes out. And that actually should 
like that's cool because that just means you can just roll right through it dude the current season bro this might be my favorite season of anime i've ever seen like it is mind-blowing animation like such brilliantly executed moments and it's also like kind of cracking open the lore of bleach really really well i'm i'm loving it dude absolutely ordered the black order 66 (laughs) is that adam sandler with thanos ordered the black order 66 hoodie i'm super excited it's so clean and josh you like the new profile pic i mean i do but is it is that you or is that supposed to be me i think it's adam sandler it kind of does look like sandler yeah i like it bro i don't know i mean it's weird looking it almost looks like it could be me as thanos no you don't think no that's not your nose i mean it's not my nose but maybe if i was like this or something yeah, that looks weird it's quite strange jacob hit, hit us up in chat like what is that is that you jacob is it sandler what's up peter b parker hope your thanksgiving went well josh theory can't wait for, for you to finish ragnarok it's truly amazing Huge OT fan and Andor had its moments, but was so boring to each their own. Who love it though? Yeah, for yeah, sure. I fully agree. Yeah. Anyone who I think it's it. cool that people really liked it. And maybe it's like a flavor of Star Wars that people felt was missing. For me, it's just not a flavor I liked, you know? Mm. Yeah. I can't wait to finish Ragnar- Ragnarok either. Streams pretty much daily on the gaming channel, Theories Arcade, for anyone interested. We're going to be doing God of War Ragnarok. Sick. I'm happy Star Wars arguments are now about show details and not are you sexist or racist. I love that there's new combos about Star Wars projects quality because since TLJ, it was only political. That's actually a fair point that Skojo is making. But here's my only rebuttal to that is that like I agree with you. And I think it's good for the fans to be talking about the stuff they don't like and the stuff they like, particularly like Boba Kenobi and Andor. All of them almost have like different issues. And I think it's totally fair to like talk about those. But my problem is that it seems like there's a large portion of the fans that wants to take like some legitimate criticism or something that you don't like. And they want to like blow it completely out of proportion and make it seem like it's bad faith. Like that's still continuing to happen. It's just not in a political sense now. Now it's in like, oh, well, you're just a hater or a grifter or whatever they're saying. Right. So. But I will agree, it's slightly better it's nice, than yeah. you're racist. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess I'm... Uh, I don't like bricks in Star Wars. What am I? Brickist? In, in, um, a mortarist? Structurist? A masonary... But... Stonist. You're stonist. Stoned. And screwed What's up, nerds and everyone in chat? Happy Monday. What's up, Alex? What up? I'm trying to make a hat with a brick emoji on it. Watch it sell out. <laughs> you should do brick, just brick and a screw. Just that's it. And it would, yeah. it would, yeah, it would do well. Probably, yeah. Look, Morty, I turned into a brick, Rick, to piss off a YouTuber. Thanks, X. Right on. Got my blacked out hoodie. What if Leia dated Luke? Uh, that would be gross. That would be Game of Thrones. But I'm glad you grabbed one while you still could. Appreciate yeah. it, dude. I, I'm pretty sure you still can because sales are still going up, but um, I've gotten some messages of people being like, I can't order one. Just refresh the page. Might be the issue. Kara Black says, episode 7 to 12 of Andor will take place from 2 BBY to 0 BBY. So it's possible that Vader could appear <clears throat> since the Galactic Civil War starts in 2 BBY. Perhaps he kills Luthen and injures Saw Gerrera. I mean, sure, it's possible. I'm not really banking on it. It feels like the show was... It feels like, to me, part of the thing with Andor was like it was trying to get you to like not even think about that stuff. Yeah. You know, where it's like, bro, like that, that shit ain't happening. Like it's irrelevant, yeah. Which, I mean, I feel like that would be a little bit too small time for Vader. That would be very Rise of Skywalker of them, though. To like just throw a bunch of sh- like cameos into the second season and for them to be like, fuck, like this didn't work. Like, let's, you know what I mean? Like, I could almost see them doing it. It's possible. Hmm. How is it that Stupendous Wave has almost 2 million subs, but Den of Nerds has only 100k subs? Josh puts in way more work and entertaining 
and then um stupendous wave is a par with hey, four thanks, man. thanks bro um i also have two hundred thousand subs so don't don't forget about that other hundred thousand and well, forty thousand on our live stream. No, actually, like ninety six or something like that. But like you know, okay. I see his point. My thing is this: I think that um, first of all, I don't really push subscribers, but also subscribers themselves are like not as big of a deal as they used to be. Like channels with my size can actually still put out massive amounts of views a month. Mm. So subscribers like aren't necessarily as important anymore. And there was a time though that like subscriber growth was like way easier. It, you know what I mean? Like there was a time where like you, it, you could just crush on subscribers and a lot of channels did. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, like I just never caught a big wave like that. You know what I mean? But I mean, we still do really well on our channels. I'm still really happy with where I'm at, but that's kind of my uh, explanation. What do you think? I don't know. I Yo, two totally different a... forms of content. Can I ask and, you a question? Um, he's been around forever. Yeah. Stupendous Wave has been around forever. And he's done, he did like just consistent content for a long, long time. Let me ask you a question. Do you know how many subscribers you gained from the fan film? Uh, like, do you have that number? Um, yeah, I think I got about 250,000, 300,000. That's it? Yeah. Really? Okay. Because what is it at right now? It's like over 25 million views. Yeah, something like that. I yeah. think, yeah. Because, like, I would think that a video like that, even if, like, 0.5% of people that watched it subbed, I mean, I guess it could be, like, around that 300,000 or something well, like it's, that. Well, it's a, um, like, the 20-whatever million people who watched it aren't unique viewers necessarily I, I i don't know i think it's all like shared around links and stuff like hey you got to watch this and then like they'll watch it and then they'll like go back to what they were doing they're not sure. necessarily like avid youtube watchers perhaps or you know they just tune in for whatever i don't know um and i've probably personally watched it more than 10 times do you know like, what i mean so there's a lot of that too yeah people. thank you um yeah. yeah i don't know i i really don't that's up to people i have no idea Mm. Um, you look at some of the other fan films, like the Darth Maul one. This thing is over thirty million, but they have what, like a hundred thousand subs or two hundred thousand sure. subs. Sure, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so it's like people, people don't really, really don't sub anymore, bro. <clears throat> no, people don't sub, and that's just like I have over a billion views right. on the channel, right? But I have only three million subscribers. True. So it's like if you think about scale, it's still like a low percentage of people. Now it's dope, of course, and it's like sure, of course, yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, it probably just bears out in the numbers. Yeah, as you were saying, subscribers don't necessarily, it's not really about the subscribers. It's more about, to, for, for payment, it's more about views. Um, yeah. Subscribers are more kind of like a, like an insurance policy, like a, <clears throat> almost like a bragging right for people where it's like, okay, there's at least this many people that consciously liked my content enough to click sure. subscribe and that they want to see more or they subscribe to my ideas or my, uh, uh, vision or whatever it might be um it could be even people who really dislike you like every time i upload a video there's usually like within the first second there's like a few dislikes already and it's mm -hmm. been like that for years um there are people who are subscribed turn on the bell notification just to get that notification and dislike it as soon as the video drops because they just wow. don't like you that much yeah it, it's just the way it is um sure. at the end of the day it all helps the algorithm helps my content because it's like well you're clicking immediately which means you're interested but i don't know man it's just the way it is um nowadays it's more so about views um just with the way the algorithm has changed and yeah it doesn't seem like subscribers are really all that much of a big deal it's more about how many people see your video i think that's what youtube pushes out and that's really kind of what they care about but as i was saying like subscribers are sort of like an insurance policy of like Let's say you upload a video, you're you're probably going to get at least five percent of your viewers, hopefully, that watch your video. Of your subs, you mean, right? Of your yeah, yeah of of your yeah. subs. Um, yeah, I agree. I feel like it's just a part of the slingshot effect. Unless like, you have a Star Wars channel, 
or having unless, a Star Wars channel or a Marvel channel or something, I find is is very different in the sense of having like a like a vlogging channel or something. Definitely, yeah. Because it's so dependent on what is exciting at that moment. So let's say like Star Wars is pretty slow, my channel will perform like I have I don't know, um, let's say five hundred thousand subs or a million subs. Right. But let's say Star Wars is hot and the Mandalorian comes out, my channel will perform as if I have. 7 million subs or 10 million subs. Right, yeah. It's, it's never almost, yeah, it's never really like a normal typical channel. It's like when Star Wars is hot, your subs kind of almost give you a little bit of an edge in the algo, in the push. And maybe even sort of with people. But like if there's no like buzz, that number of subs isn't going to push you out the same way that like, you know, Gideon's what what's what has he got like five or something like that right like that. yeah so it's like it's not going to be the same thing and and yeah it is dude youtube is like a fascinating game and a weird you know thing to be a part of um and this year in particular like so many changes bro like they're yeah. you know just they're gearing some stuff up and there's been so many glitches like the I know, yeah. The monetization, the monetization. Oh, my entire Dude, channel. Like, this what? wasn't the whole channel wasn't making any money for six know, years right? of work at, for hours. You know, and it, Bro, it's, it's like crazy. All right, never got that money again. Cool. Whatever. Yeah, and YouTube's just like our bad. <laughs> like what? Like, <laughs> yeah, literally. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. And then they changed the algorithm on top of that, so that's just pushing yeah. out shorts and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it was. Um, but also, you know, I I really attribute it, attribute um, my success to the viewers. Um, I think I've been able to connect with a lot of people, and I think that's why a lot of them come back. It's not so much just like, here's some Star Wars news, or here's some fan fiction or something. It's it's kind of like, it's not just about Star Wars anymore. It's like me. Yeah. It's like my t me as a person and Star Wars on top of that. So it's, yep. it's I think I have that going for the channel. Um, and I think that's what you do as well. It's It's about you. It's not just like you have some robotic channels that are out there and they just kind of like spew the latest news or their like ideas or they'll like throw easter eggs constantly in the title and they'll just mm -hmm. it's just all script work that they have like a whole bunch of people working for them let's say or sure. whatever and um i like the fact that you know we do things a little more personally and maybe it's not as corporate maybe we won't grow as big as you know some of those massive companies but you connect more with people i like this better yeah for sure uh, there's a like a streaming thing and then like a it's almost like every kind of content has its like own unique code or like way to crack it or yeah. you know whatever um but yeah i mean like just kind of speaking to his like point about um stupendous wave like you know low key there are months where i probably do better than stupendous wave like legitimately okay. make more money okay. um and that's probably just because of you know, a little bit of like this show, my streaming, and then also that channel, right? And so like, I have this like kind of really well diversified thing that I do, you know what I mean? Like I'm not necessarily so like one particular channel or like revenue stream doesn't really make or break, you know, what I do. And I just feel, I feel so grateful to, to even have that 200K, you know what I mean? And to be able to do it because legitimately, it's probably even harder now to get 200k subs than it used to be. You know what I mean? And like things are just so no. different now. So I think it depends what you do. I think if you open a prank channel, you'll be very successful. Pranks seem to be hot. Pranks seem hot. to be pretty hot. Yeah. For reactions, sure. Human reactions. If you have, let's say like five grand and you go out and you just start tipping waitresses mm. and you record it. Sure. It's very different today. It's a very different type of uh, content creation. You know, ask people what they do for a living and they drive nice cars. These are interesting ideas, but they're very easy. You don't have to really put any money into anything. You just, it's, well, unless you're giving five grand out, but. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, um, it's cool. Like, I find a lot of philanthropic videos to be some of my favorites. Like, where they mm. just, um, my favorite one, I think, is That Was Epic. I've been following his channel for so many years. Juan just seems like such a cool guy. And yeah. he like goes to people's doors and is like, hey, how much is your rent this month? And they're like, why? And then they say, and he's like, well, here you go. And he just gives them the cash. It's like two mm -hmm. grand. He does this like 10 times. 
um, or he'll go and like cut people's earphones, uh, headphones, and then gives gifts them a new iPod Air, Max, or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. So I like those kind of videos. I think those are pretty cool. So there's a lot of different ways to be successful on YouTube nowadays, but it's definitely changed for sure. I feel like yeah, yeah. From when I started, but that's it's a fun that's, game though. It's cool to be in the space. You know what I mean, and to like have the ability to not only do this and make money, but also like there's still the chance every single day and every single video that you and I do a video that just abnormally pops off and like goes in a certain way. Or like if you think about you, it's like even these little things you say on a live stream get all this like earned media. Like legitimately, there's probably more people watching your clips watching you know or or seeing your the memes and stuff uh yeah. then that actually watched that live stream so it's like yeah that the the sort of media figure of like you actually is sort of expanded beyond your even own reach i mean even this show people clip out and get views on tiktok and stuff like that right so it's like yeah that's cool yeah it's super cool it's like a really interesting sort of game to be a part of it's yeah i'm it's, really it's really pretty cool thankful that um you know if you tell me this uh what when i started it was just me in my little apartment no one had seen my face and i was just making video after video after video and i was falling asleep in my chair at four five six in the morning and making scripts and recording and just blast them blasting them out and having a ball um that people today would be like sharing clips of me or 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 posting memes i feel very fortunate that um i'm being recognized that much it's cool yeah 100 nice. man so yeah we thank you guys wouldn't be here without you absolutely x ace i get why we didn't get vader palps or legacy characters but not even a mention of thrawn nor tarkin give me thrawn maybe next season yeah maybe next season i mean dude i would love it like Let's yeah, do it. Be sick, hey? Mandalore! <laughs> Scoop up. Oh, he got the black hat and the sweater. Nice, <laughs> dude. God, I look so angry. In <laughs> look so bald. I look so bald, bro. You look like Frosty. A little bit, dude. Frosty I wine do. job. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, for sure. Thank you, Mandalore. I hope you enjoy it, man. They're the nicest merch I've ever sold, and uh, I'm really, really proud of them. I mean, he's been living in the thing for two weeks. He figured it's got to be comfortable. I got a whole bunch. Uh, I got uh, a pretty, of ones. Oh, you do? Nice. Uh, oh, yeah. Dad joke for Josh. I saw a book about, oh, nice, how to solve 50% of your problems. So I bought two. <laughs> like Smart. It. Smart. Sick. Smart. Sick. But wouldn't you still be like. left over with 25% of your original problems? I'm not trying to get all crazy on you, but. Think about it. You're trying to analyze a dad tangent. Joke. Yeah, of course. You are a dad. You know me. Can we make Star Wars Rick Roll brick rolling? I, I'm telling you, I think this brick thing is going to be a big movement. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We are, we are. From this whole brick thing with theory, I realize the whole city is made out of cremated people bricks. What? <laughs> and or. Uh, okay. Yeah, the whole city. Damn. Oh, look at this. That looks like some AI art. Uh, if you quit, can I have your channel? Says Star Wars tonight. Um, if you pay me what um, what I want for it, sure. If I quit, but I don't think I'll do that, dude. I've heard some evaluations on like Mr. Beast Empire, and uh, mm. some serious economists think it's a twenty billion dollar evaluation. That's like, interesting. can you like twenty billion? Oh, that's wild. Well, he has a lot of like restaurants and stuff, right? Or his, his he has, yeah, he's got restaurants, his chocolate, but also like, did you know, like his back catalog just continues to crush. So he makes like, I think he said one time he makes like $75 million a month off of his back uh, <laughs> what? catalog. Yeah. Just off of old videos. And then, like, he'll update the thumbnails. Like, he paid a guy to no, go in there. No, 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 no. There's no way. $75 million a month from across YouTube all, revenue. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Across all his channels of uh, back catalog. Because if you think about it, all of his stuff's evergreen. 
Yeah, all... of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like he cranks on that shit, bro. Anyway, uh Brady Wells says brick, 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 brick. Okay, brick. Well, his main channel gets got two hundred and seventy seven million views. I assume he's in Google preferred, I would hope. Um so let's say that's roughly uh jeez. Let's say that's roughly <sighs> That's ridiculous. Yes, yeah, absurd. I yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like um that's holy just one, shit. That's just one channel that's yeah. Right. It's a lot of hooch, bro. Like, and then you go to his insane. beast philanthropy. Oh my god, two, like two million crazy. views. And then we go to Mr. Beast Gaming. Beast Gaming dude, his Mr. Beast, Beast Gaming sixty-five million views in the last month. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. How? Like, that's insane. Because he's literally cracked the actual fucking code. That's insane. And on top dude. of that, his brand is strong. If you combine a strong brand with like an absolute masterful understanding of this algorithm, like that's yeah. what you get. And like he doesn't he even watch movies, bro. This guy doesn't watch TV or movies. He just like he's he's just YouTube. Like that's all he does. You ever watch any of the podcasts with him or anything? His Rogan is incredible, which also did 10 million views. I haven't watched it. Oh, it's great. You got to check it out. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, yeah, 75 mil makes sense. I just looked at his Beast, Beast Reacts channel. 100, 111 million views. I mean, that's... It's absurd, bro. Like, he probably does a 1 billion views a month, which is like... And a lot of that's back catalog. That's what I mean. Is like, And that'll last forever. Like when he calls it quits, that thing will continue to make money for the rest of time, as long as there's ad revenue and it's, you know, out there. Yeah, it will. Yeah, good for it's him. Wild. Yeah. He worked hard for it. But yeah, he he works ridiculously. Hard yeah, for sure. Good for him, man. Um, the negativity from supposed fans over those who have differing opinions is mind-boggling. I was told I'm part of the problem because I said you're not a piece of shit. This is just sad to see at this point. Yeah, but you got to realize, like, you're you're going into, I don't know, like, what's a game where, like, there's a cave and you don't go into the cave because you know it's just all a bunch of zombies or all a bunch of, like, these creatures that will just try to fucking kill you. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, it's like, that's, you're, you're going into that cave. So, I mean, and you're wondering, like, that's not but you come out of the cave and you're like oh there's a whole world out here of people who like sure. aren't trying to kill me it's like oh okay like normal people so that's how i see those kinds of people in twitter i just see it as um it's a cesspool of people who have like a certain type of thinking that uh you first of all don't like me for whatever reason yeah and they may have their valid points um but that's none of my business it's it's whatever I'm not going to be liked by everybody. I don't want to be liked yeah. by everybody. I just want to be me. I dude, I totally get what you're saying. I think for me, there's just a couple things that make it a little bit different. Number one, you have actual content creators and people with a platform that are actually like really supporting this idea and like really shitting on you. There's also like literally really? people that, oh yeah. And there's literally people that we've had on this show before that are bad mathing you in ways that are like, like confusing to me. Is so like who I'm, who I'm thinking it is a hundred percent. It is. Yeah. And yeah. Well, it's like I'm, surprised. I'm not surprised either but like that's that shit bro where it's like i get you and a little bit it is in the cave a little bit it is isolated but i also think it's kind of a it's a little more prevalent you know it's almost like the cave is like they're letting them out <laughs> you know what i mean like they're they're mingling a little it's like well, who who's it's tough there's other content creators that are yeah, they have like uh, podcasts or shows or whatever. Some oh, actually... oh the, the ATG guy. Oh, that, yeah, that, guy's, that guy's been that guy's been riding my pole for years, bro. He is obsessed. He can't. It's wild. It's wild. Every he time really... he talks about me, he gets like crazy clicks. So I mean, yeah, I mean, it's in yeah. his best interest. He's he yeah. he loves me. At the end of the day, he loves sure. me. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That's what I mean, though. Is like it's hard for me to say it's a cave exactly because like some of these people actually like go to fucking Star Wars premieres and shit. You know, like it's just yeah, it's yeah. a weird, it's well, a weird thing. Look, there are a lot of uh, 
things that I don't talk about. Um, but one thing I'll mention is like, there are a lot of different companies that make Star Wars products. Um, whether it be chairs or clothing or whatever. And a lot of them work with a lot of Instagram Star Wars people or um, perhaps YouTubers or TikTokers and stuff like that. And all of these have to go through Disney and Lucasfilm. Now, I obviously have people on, you know, my different mediums uh, that they make money when I make money through sponsorships. So they're reaching out to everybody that wants to work with me. And every single one of them, well, most of them, want to work with me because at the end of the day, I pull big numbers and I have the largest YouTube Star Wars channel on the face of the planet and everything is Star Wars centric. The market of everyone watching is a Star Wars fan and they would bend over backwards and give me copious amounts of money to advertise their Star Wars product on my channel or my uh, uh, Spotify or iTunes or whatever it might be. But it always comes to the same answer that we reached out to Disney and they don't want anything to do with you. So I understand that um, there is that line there that's been kind of drawn and I've drawn it for myself in the sense that I am extremely vocal. Um, I do say things that are definitely um, controversial, but at the end of the day, that to me is so much more important than a bag. And I'm not saying like other people who are doing those advertisements are selling their soul. I'm just saying that perhaps they are in a different situation or whatever it might be. But uh, for me, this is my life and I'm, I'm not going to do those kinds of things. I'm not going to sell myself just to, uh, you know, make some money and, and peddle stuff to you guys just so I can do a couple ads here and there. I'm lucky enough that I make, you know, a copious amount of money more than I need off of YouTube and Spotify and all this stuff and merch that I, I, I will always speak my mind. You know, I was, I will speak free, but there is that sort of thing in the room where I see like, okay, like I know you guys, like a lot of you guys that talk shit on me, you're actually gag ordered. Like you, you can't say anything other than what the narrative wants you to say, because True. That's bread and butter, that's what you're getting paid to do. Right. You want the movie tickets, you want the sponsorships. Otherwise you're fucked. Like what, right. <laughs> what yeah, are you going to yeah, yeah. do? So I understand that. And I'm very sensitive towards that. I understand everyone's got to eat. Everyone's got to do their own thing. And but it, at the end of the day, it's unfortunate. Um, I wish people would be a little more real. And because I've spoken with a lot of those people behind closed doors who um, do talk shit. And, and a lot of them are really nice. Or they're really different how, as to how their like, online persona is. But it is what it is. I understand. Everyone, everyone got to eat. Everyone got to do the thing. Some people True. differently. So. True. <clears throat> you know. Last yeah. thing. That's why, that's why I always laugh when, when people yeah. say like, oh, he's just doing it for the money. And it's like. Oh man, if you only, if you guys only knew. Yeah, you guys only knew, you know. And I, uh, but I just want to keep it about the content, the most yeah. of it. And that's it. Yeah, for sure, man. I would just say, just I don't want to linger on this too much, but I will say that I think that a lot of people hit me up and basically said, like, I didn't exactly vibe with what you were saying about the fandom until this last thing, and I saw it for what it was, and like, holy shit, these fans, right? And it's almost like because, like, after well, the, the brick thing. Yeah, the brick thing and just their toxicity towards you and also me. And like when I made that video after the after the first three episodes of Andor, I said in the video, one of the reasons I wanted to walk away was with, I didn't want to deal with nine more weeks of like me saying this is how I feel about it and having the Star Wars fan base tell me all the reasons why I actually am wrong. Yeah. Why I don't my opinion is invalid and all that sort of stuff. And it's like fucking crazy. And there were people within my own community that didn't get it. They thought I was exaggerating. And then the last five days have literally proven me 100% historically correct about this fandom and yeah. about a lot of the people that are in it. It's sad. You know what I mean? Like, it's sad. Yeah. But maybe it took <clears throat> that for some people to actually see, you know, as crazy as that is. So I know, man. It is what it is. You're, you know, you're a man of uh, integrity. And, you know, that's why we roll together. You know, you as you well, don't, you don't, you don't sell your soul. You don't, uh, and I'm not saying anyone else does that. People like to twist words. I mean, for God's sakes, I say something in a private live stream on my own channel about bricks and screws and mm. I even elaborate on it. And it's, uh, it's as if I said something horrible, but right. 
that's just the world we live in and um I, i'm so used to it at this point so it's whatever man you know i just move on just make another video yeah. make another cool video true. about star wars or at least one that i think is cool true man first true. bricks and now what wheels doors <laughs> god if they put wheels in this mother truck yeah. yeah i know that'll be the next thing <laughs> i'm so bricked up right now it's insane my man tron apostle look like a guy That's from tron. a viagra commercial what's up man's uh, planed <laughs> what's with what's this with brick, the brick stuff dumb dumb amen bro could have said bricks it or not screws not there is no screw okay and got more money than kenobi worse than bricks and screws true that is worse and uh an egregious affront to star wars everywhere hey is that a brick in your pocket or a happy to see that's one <laughs> <laughs> scotty bob says five bucks says super sticker Wait, what? Did he actually send a super sticker, or is that? Is just being I don't crazy? think so. Yeah. Please live react to Anat One Hundred One YouTube video. I think he's saying I'm Arnold. Arnold One Hundred One. There's a a YouTube channel, Arnold One Hundred One. He does uh, he dresses like as Thrawn. And okay. He, he does. Um, he plays Galaxy of Heroes or Star Wars Heroes or something like that. Okay. I've never seen him. I don't know the game. I haven't played the game, so I wouldn't know what I'm reacting to. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. What's good, Happy, Happy Theory, Theory and Daddy Josh? Just got done doing a nice chess workout today. You like my profile pic? Oh, hell I love yeah, it. son. I love it, dude. Looks clean. The rock eyebrow kind of Looks thing going clean. on. Damn. Damn. Spent 800 bucks buying every Walking Dead comic at my local shop that wasn't in my collection for Black Friday. What did y'all get for Black? Man, you, did, you get a, did you get some of my merch? No, nah, bro. You got that eight hundred bucks. You got on that these kind of comics, cash. Bro. I mean, he spent a little money on my merch. Bro. Support episode two, bro. Those are some of those comics are very hard to come by, though. Uh, if yeah. he has the full collection, that's incredible. Good for you. That's cool. Well, I hope you enjoy your collection, man. You can enjoy it in some like comfy hoodie as well. I knew a guy hey, that used to always look for those. Like when we'd go into comic shops in Philly, he's always trying to find like a few that he was looking for. Right. Are they were actually tough to find? Pro, yeah, definitely. Well, because at first, like, Walking Dead, like, nobody knew it was going to pop yeah. off like that. And then, like, the show came out, and it got, like, just crazy popular. I mean, the comic was popular, but, like, not at first, you yeah. know? So, yeah, there are some legitimately very hard issues to find. And then once it became popular, there were issues, like, when Glenn died and, you know, certain things like that were, that were just, like, very iconic, so... Oh, he made a video about me. Oh, shit. Should we watch it on stream? Is it about bricks and screws? Maybe. Hey, that's your call, man. If you want to, I'll give my take on it. Oh, where is it? Oh, here it is. Oh, it's 16 minutes long. Ugh. I'll watch it for a, for a few minutes so we can see what it's all about. Yeah. Maybe we'll finish it later or something. Yeah, maybe. Hey, bro, keep it up. You rebooted my love for Star Wars. Don't give up. Forget hateful minorities. You inspire a lot of us regular Star Wars fans. You keep my Star Wars love going. Thanks, Dawson. Appreciate it, man. Okay. baby welcome back ladies and gentlemen gungans and droids across our beloved empire to a rather interesting video today i really want to talk about this we're gonna have a little bit of star wars galaxy heroes in the background for those that just there's a little uh doc in there eh? a little doc hey look little doc's doc. one of the most influential entertainers of our time he is yeah you know and i think he I don't think he gets a modicum of the uh, credit that he deserves. He's he's so entertaining, bro. He's, yeah, he's such a different... Just want to see some Star Wars Galaxy pixels in your face. But I want to talk about something, kind of a few things. Number one that I want to talk about, we're not going to... <laughs> like, I always love this guy's setup. Dude. No spoilers or anything like that, but Andor just wrapped up. And I kind of want to get some thoughts on yeah. the show in regards to Andor, where I kind of place it. It's on gaming, not so much on theory and lore, which this guy is an absolute fantastic person. Such a fountain of lore, as well as talented individual when it comes to creating fan films and whatnot. So 
let's sit down and have a little bit of discussion oh, of you. all this stuff today. So why don't we, Gary, can you, you got something for me? Yeah, all right. Let's go ahead and in the background, let's go roll just some random Cassie and uh, Omicron game that kind of fits the theme for it. So we've already talked about Cassie and Andor's Omicron for those that care about Galaxy of Heroes. Well, let's get on to this discussion. Part one of this video is Andor. What are my uh, impressions of Andor? Uh, one thing I want to put out there, this is kind of the one reason why it's so chapters my curiosity to talk about know. this topic here. Is it, at times yeah, 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 it feels here. like now this is going to be my second of stars there they're watching or in general just to you guys because i'm making this video for you guys and as i prepped at the beginning i think star wars theory is an incredibly talented this is this is like a star wars doc man i, I love his shit. yeah this is he's got a lot going on here i still don't know if there's going to be a, if this is a good or bad video but oh sure i mean he could say all this stuff and say like, i think but i think all, that, i think he's great yeah. but Right, he could Stephen A. Smith you. He's a dear, dear He's a, friend, yeah. you know. Passionate, <laughs> but Wars, they wouldn't have gotten to the level if, <laughs> if they didn't have those those two uh, ingredients mixed together in this. And I just, and if Star Wars theory ever does see this, I think they need to, you know, understand. They probably do understand to an extent that when you have such a big voice in a large community like Star Wars, at times it might seem the voices are loud, and you're. Wait, that got one hundred and seventy thousand views on that one tweet. <laughs> yeah bro it's been all over dude it's like and that's why like people again it was so bad that i think a lot of people came around to it and a lot of people actually understand why i'm addressing it in like some of my streams and like kind of trying to have fun with it because it's literally so big that mm. i wouldn't feel right ignoring it do you know what i mean that's wild it's wild yeah that's cool it is cool <laughs> yeah all right you're being pummeled but when you still look at your metrics, the people that come out and enjoy your stuff, I think it really goes to show that people still love what you do out there. And I think one thing that uh, I, I, I really truly believe that I'm kind of like that mediator of the Star Wars Twitter year in general. As you, a lot of you guys know, my background, I have a law degree, right? You know, you gotta get something out of a $100,000 degree, right? And one thing that truly, that tr I think the biggest, one of the biggest skills I pulled out of being put through that process of going through law school and then also you know helping others once i was you know as a law clerk and he's a lawyer well i think yeah he might still be but yeah it definitely seems like he was, he's uh went to school for it and what i wow. practiced at least a little cool. bit yeah nice after see kids you don't need a degree anymore just become a youtuber <laughs> Passing the bar and whatnot is you work with people of a variety of different backgrounds, a variety of different opinions, and one of the skills you're taught is to understand both sides of an argument, of a right. discussion, right? And that's one of the things, like, if I needed to, I can fully advocate and to 100% those that despise Andrew, but also I can fully advocate for those that absolutely love Andrew and they can't understand why these people do not like Andor. Sure, and of course, I can see that. In my opinion, where I definitely was on the more positive side of the experience of Andor. So you can have a personal opinion, but also understand both sides. And I think that's why, that's where I come from, where I don't fault anyone for having a different Star Wars opinion for me. And that's where Star Wars theory comes in. Uh, they've been dogpiled, in case you guys don't know. Uh, I think they were trending on Twitter at one point. All the mm -hmm. Star Wars Reddits are jumping on them. Long story short, one of the problems of the internet in general is that things can be taken out of context, especially for a big creator, big voice. That happens for me in times of the games I play where a particular opinion I have, you know, uh, it could be more of a spice of writing, but when it's taken out of context, the people that maybe don't know you too well or watch your stuff, they have a very different opinion. But the thing that got Star Wars Theory uh, under fire was after the final finale of Andor, they, I will agree, you know, I'll say this, um, I do respect this stuff, but I do think this was a, a kind of a bad take and i understand that maybe go. it wasn't a fully fleshed out thought because they're we go. in a live stream format it was right after watching we go. and they maybe already didn't have that uh perfect experience or great experience because they preferred that more traditional star wars why does he keep saying they yeah it is kind of weird that's not your preferred pronouns no maybe it's just, i don't know maybe he's just in a habit of doing he that. thinks that star wars theory is a corporation like a no, like I think he, from what he said, I think he knows that you're you me? or whatever. Yeah. Okay, which again, I get, and that's what got me into Star Wars as well. So in case you haven't heard it, I'll, I'll play this kit, uh, this clip here. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't laugh. I did get a good chuckle out of this. Uh, I by no means do I binge all of Star Wars theories, but I like, see him from time to time. I watch things like Star Wars Explained, Eckhart's Ladder, 
Star Wars theory, but I don't got time to sit there and consume all this type of Star Wars uh, lore content. But, you know, at times I pick some stuff up when I got some free time. So I'll play the clip for you guys so you guys can get the context of why people are dogpiling on Star Wars theory. And then we'll kind of uh, branch off the discussion a bit more. So let's play it, Gary. It's just whatever. It's honestly a kind of a forgettable show. Um, look, acting was great. The cinematography was great. Yeah. The budget was great. Mm -hmm. The writing was good. Yeah. But it was geez, a lot of little things. I mean, when we saw the camera in the previous episode, there were like screws in the wall. When we see certain architecture. That's the part where I started. I, I, I did chuckle. I did chuckle because I believe we've seen screws before inside of stars. Bricks. You know, bricks. Like smooth stone or sandstone or whatever it might be that was in the prequels or the originals which kind of gives you the feel of star wars the whole thing about star wars is to feel like it's from a galaxy far far and away. that i do agree with that um, part i, I do, do agree with right there the guns the blasters they look like actual guns you know little things like that took me out of it um i feel like it dragged on a lot in a lot of episodes that that's, i think that's 100 valid as well moments that really took took a lot i think my favorite part of the show was probably the, the whole prison um thing. Yeah, yeah, so they cut out. Cut it off. So again, cut off. What? I'm going to start talking about what I liked. I know, right? Yeah, yeah they yeah. don't need that it's shit. Like a to full, make like few, like a three-hour live stream, and it's just like, bro, it is so that. wild. I like this. Even I like watching that, this but... clip, I don't get it. Even watching this clip, I don't understand why people are so fixated on this. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. It's so benign. Yeah, I don't like, get it, man. What? <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Mm -hmm. Should we keep going a little bit? Maybe you want to. I feel like he's got a good take on it, though. He's basically just, yeah, you know, he's making a lot of the points like, you know, you've got this big voice. Um, the internet kind of pulls this out of people, stuff's out of context, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I think he's got a good vantage point on it. Yeah, I do. Um, I never had much, I didn't watch much of his videos because I don't know much about this game, but yeah, he always seemed very entertaining, seems level headed. And, um, yeah, whatever his take is, I appreciate him. Uh, he's, doing his thing so he seems like somebody that's chiming in a, in a super understandable non-toxic way and i feel like he's trying yeah, to speak cool. yeah he's like trying to speak a little more reason into the whole situation rather than just being like because like some of the things i've seen people say about you and about me i'm just like how does that like thought occur and you just don't have anything else that like kind of runs counter to that. Like you just have that thought pop up and you're like, yeah, that's what it is. And it feels like so uncharitable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so. there must be some hidden, hidden anger or something. Gotta be some pain, some pain. There's some pain behind those. Oh, eyes. Well. Yeah. It's all good. Um, we could have him on the show one day. That'd be fun. Yeah, for sure. Be fun. Hey bro. Keep it up. You oh, read this one. Thanks Dawson. Mm -hmm. This is where the fun begins, says Rusty. This is where the fun begins. Any theories on what Han Solo would be doing in Boba F Book of Boba Fett Season 2? I don't Running know, but I... Boba I mean, yeah, for sure. I actually think it's... I think it's possible that you could see some Harrison Ford, man. He loves the de-aging. Whatever they did on Indy has, like, really turned him around on this stuff. He really likes it. And he's going to yeah. be the Red Hulk, so. Harrison's getting that work. Why not? Come back to Star Wars, baby. That'd be cool. So, Valkyrie finally got through all of Crimson Rain comics and just read Hidden Empire. Why isn't this a show with Amelia Clark as lead? It would do numbers. Yeah. She's underutilized, for sure. She's, uh, she's an interesting character and a good actress, so. When Power in thoughts. More? Who the hell's power and thoughts? Thoughts spelled like I think. Or? Yeah, no, he. But Dylan, the CJ, is that you? You dude. <laughs> you just said something that like only a few of us would. It was like a like an inside joke in high school. So I'm like, okay. what? Nobody nice. else would know that. Nice. Nobody so, else would boy? know that. Uh, you and Josh are an inspiration to me. Love both. Thanks, man. Thanks, baby bug. Appreciate you. Your inspiration to us. <laughs> the people talking shit are justifying it by saying his opinion is so bad he doesn't deserve respect. Like, what? People dick riding the fuck out of the... Dude, I know. Like, and that's like a thing that they actually think, right? 
Like yeah. his opinion is so bad, he doesn't deserve respect. Like that's fucking mind blowing <laughs> to me. Like, and people think like people literally want to silence you. Like yeah. that's like they're so mad, bro. Like they're so mad, they want to silence you. It's yeah, it's crazy. Okay. Good luck. And again, you like fucking Antar, bro. You like the show. I, I was the one over here like I fucking hate it, and yet everybody's like, you know. I know it's It's not about having bricks in Star Wars. It's about the placement. I think like having stones or bricks in an old Sith or Jedi temple or something is different than what happened. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I agree. Like it's just immersion breaking and that's the point you were making. You know, and you even said it's little things. It's not like you said, this is what killed it for me. You literally said it's little things that take me out of it. Mm. Bro. I'm not worried about it. Oh, <laughs> it's interesting. Hugh says, been... "Haven't been joining the lives. Way too busy with college, but have not missed one video or stream from you both. Please don't forget. You both make a lot of people's days easier. Keep on keeping on. Hey, man, that's really sweet. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, we love seeing you here with that weird profile picture. Weird. It just keeps getting weirder too. But I'm down. Yeah. That just bathroom. I took that photo in, and it was LA Fitness or something." No, what was it? I think it was an LA Fitness. It was an Irvine. Yeah. Oilers Workshop. Bricks and screws may break my views, but nerds will never hurt me. George, you're, <laughs> you're fine. Just keep making content. Enjoy personal showers. Yeah. So nice, dude. <laughs> Thanks, well done. Chris. Well done. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Nick. Nico. Says, boy, have I missed you guys. Haven't been able to super chat in two months. I was deployed as a medic in Fort Meyer for Hurricane Ian. Wow. Really? Right after your, your chemo and shit? That's wild. Hey, he's cancer uh, free. That's awesome. By the way, I'm officially cancer free and missed this. That's yes, awesome. Dude, dude good Fuck for you. Yeah. Congrats, man. Yeah. That's huge. great. Like, so for anyone in chat who doesn't know, like, he would join the stream sometimes. be like, hey, like, I am going through chemo right now. Blah, blah, and be like, dude, like, fight through it. So this is fucking beautiful. This is great. Everyone in chat, big dub. Big dub. Big w in the chat. Big old dub. Maybe even put a syringe for uh, for chemo, but I don't know. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I actually didn't know they did it through syringes and until my cousin had it or whatever. Um yeah, there's different ways. Yeah, I, I had there's it. actually some radiation that'll just spot yeah, radi- in, right? Yeah, there's radiation. I had the, I had uh through IV. I had it through IV in like every fucking vein possible. Well, my cousin had a thing that's literally a it was like under his collarbone and it was this plug that was just stuck on his chest. Yeah, dude, so, I had that. I had that. Yeah. And so like they just would do it through that. And I was like, um, dude, what? Or if you can see that scar. Yeah, I see plug? it. Yeah. 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 I can see so it. they I had a a thing like a gelatin looking thing, like a plug where basically you, you just then inject the syringe into there. Because mm-hmm. um, there were no more holes. They were like, were they're like injecting my feet and my hands and it's wild hands. You know, it was not fun. Yeah, it's wild. Not fun. Man, I hated the way they were hounding on you. I saw it all on Twitter, and I could tell they didn't watch the whole vid. Yeah. Yep. Tis what it is. Yep. Tis what it is. George Lucas's Attack of the Clones had a scene with bricks in the background as well. But I understand if you still feel it's not Star Wars. Love you too still. Well, thank you for understanding, Alfonso. Yeah. Um. No, so as I mentioned in that video, um, that there were bricks in the prequels. You even said it in that very same clip. But I didn't like how the bricks were like what, something you would find on like a, I don't know, like a like a pizza shop down the yeah, street. Yeah, just look like regular ass masonry. I mean, I'm staring at a bunch of bricks right now, actually. Yeah, but like, you know, in The Phantom Menace or in um, Attack of the Clones or whatever, it, it's like very like, very looks like it was very machine pressed, like smooth. It's all even. Uh, that's kind of the vibe that I was going for, but I guess that went over people's heads. Yeah. That's fine. Theory, you Three. need to be serial about Andor. Yeah. Seriously, I like Andor, but don't love it. Keep up the great work, Theory, and Josh. Love from Australia. Hey! I hey, wonder man. if he knows Hannah. That's probably stupid to say, but... That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey! You know John, you know John dude? You know that's he's, I know another person from Australia. He's you from America. That? Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. I totally know John. He's a dick. Yeah. 
Wouldn't that be wild? It would be wild, yeah. If there were like only like, I don't know, maybe a hundred people per country. That shit would be wild, bro. Sometimes Weird. it feels like that. Feels like they're all clones. You think that it would be possible if a Jedi Master baits Vader until he's almost finished for him to be like, what have I paid for? 100%, yes. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it's a real pretzel. It's a real brain twister. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. I'm usually so good at those. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, you didn't see it. No! Uh, yeah, it's going to get yeah. clipped, dude. I'm usually yeah, dude. so good at those, but he freaking used... I want to give you that one. That was smart. Yeah, he did good. Oh. I guess I was wrong. There was no danger at all. Nice. Sick. If the Loki Varian from God of War is not in Loki Season 2, I'm going to be disappointed. Is Loki pretty sick in that game? Got to work? Yeah, so far. Okay, nice. I think I'm not even halfway because I'm playing it on the hardest difficulty, so I keep I'm gonna keep dying. Mm, okay, right on, right on, right on. Your two chat are hug boxes. You two are fandom menace. You, what? Uh, not in line with most fans now. Josh, in particular, blocks anyone who calls him out in chat. That's not true. I just don't look on my streams. If I like smell something funky about you or I don't like what you're saying, like I'm just going to get you out of there. Like, and that's just a different vibe. Like, you know, you, you handle your chat the way you do. I handle my chat the way I am. But like, it's not that I just totally take away like all dissenting opinions. It's usually like, if I think you're a butthole, like I'm just going to get you out of there. And to be honest with you, Chris, like with all due respect for you to even bring this up, it, it does indicate that you're a butthole person. Like you might not be like horrible or whatever, but you're not a person that I want in my chat. So eh, agree to disagree, Chris. Thanks, Chris. We appreciate you. I heard about this controversy through on all T one on one. He has a law degree and defended you in his video. Dear Star Wars theory. He would be a great ally. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. He seems like a cool guy. Cool dude. Yeah, he seems chill. Yeah. Theory will soon pass the official Star Wars and subs, but yeah, he totally doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to Star Wars. So toxic, so me. I ain't worried about it, man. Look, <laughs> so I, toxic at, at the end of the day, I am here for the ones who want to watch, and that's it. So you guys, and um, if along the way you don't like me and you you kind of like get a taste and maybe you watch a video of, or two, and you're like, oh, he's not really what the rhetoric says, and you start to become uh, a friend, cool. Yeah, for sure. Otherwise. Whatever. It's your choice, man. Nick says, also the dialogue in Andor was great, but it wasn't Star Wars at all for me. Tales of the Jedi kept me sane. Filoni at his best. The Duke arc was perfect. At this point, I'm good with just animated series. Yeah, a little, a little bit the same, but let's just see what the boys have in store for us next year, because John and Dave working hard on Mando 3, and, and Dave has been just putting everything into uh, Ahsoka, so... I, yeah. I tend to agree with Nick, but I'm also quite excited for the live action stuff next year. It's going to be awesome. I am too. I'm going to show you guys something. Mm. Um, we're looking at hiring this company to, um, to handle all the stuff for episode two. Is this destiny or something? Some some stuff at least. Uh, no, no, no. That's just a company. That's just some of their work they've done. Hmm. Looks cool. Prisoner one nine seven eight has breached cell blocking. So they've done some pretty good work. Looks cool. Yeah, I mean, like, I want it to go ultra-realistic, and that's still something I'm looking into doing. However, the problem with that is that it was quoted that it would be $400,000 a 
a minute. Holy shit. That's pretty much almost my whole budget. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. So they're saying for photorealism, that's what it would so cost. They, yeah, they said if I want to do the whole 35 or 32 page script um, in photorealism, it would cost five to seven million US. Hmm. All CGI. <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. I, I just really think a lot of that shit is like just a product of the time because like AI is getting so good. And, I you know, you look at Unreal Engine 5, which just got this new update, like 5.1. It's absurd. And like you start to think about like I'm telling you, man, in yeah, the next five years, you're going to be able to do this for a fraction of that money. Yeah. And it's going to be able to look brilliant. I can go back and like redo it. But I mean, I still think this looks great, you know? I mean, it's very pristine. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you can yeah. tell, you know, all the edges are rendered in this really nice way. The way the light catches them and everything like, yeah, it's dope. But I don't know if it's like 500 grand a minute dope. No, no, that that is what it would look like. That is not ultra. That is not. OK, so that's not what you're talking about. Well, that is like the what the quality would potentially look like, maybe a little bit better. Well, that we're thinking cool. about it. We're thinking yeah. about it. We're seeing like what our options are. Um. We'll see. Looks clean. But it's looking good. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, what do you think, chat? Um, Darth Caden. It's funny because it seems like your Android watch party has attracted a completely different audience. When you look at the comments, it's full of people hating on the prequels and the OGs. What do you what do you think about that? Because I gotta I gotta take I gotta take. Yeah, I think Andor does attract a different audience, to be honest. I think they attract a different audience than Tales of the Jedi. Dude, yeah. I feel like yeah. Andor was a show almost made for people that don't actually like other Star Wars. I would just call it Star Wars, mm -hmm. but like other Star Wars. Because I know a lot of people that really like Andor are kind of like in the camp of like, this is what I always wanted Star Wars to be. Well, if yeah. you've always wanted Star Wars to be something that it wasn't, I really don't know how much you actually like Star Wars, you know? Yeah. And that's just like, that's just my take on it is that I felt like it was so drastically different from all the stuff that I love that I was like, I can't really appreciate it because it feels like it's fundamentally not Star Wars. Right. Um, and bro, like that, I've seen that over the past couple of weeks, like all these people being like, like the way that like some of the people on Reddit and Twitter attack the criticisms of Andor, <sighs> like mm -hmm. it legitimately just makes me feel that like, with that kind of an attitude, how could you have enjoyed any of the other things that were Star Wars? Like, what else was there before this that was like Andor? Um, nothing. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, man. I, you know, know Star like Star Wars is the Force and lightsabers mm -hmm. and uh, family troubles and overcoming obstacles, which is Andor has overcoming obstacles. I think any. <laughs> any story does um but yeah i mean like look look at the first six films look at the first nine films it's all the force and lightsabers and jedi and sith what are you, mm -hmm. you gonna deny that i think many of them are well okay <laughs> yeah right it's like all right <laughs> taking fucking crazy pills dude we're on bizarro world now yeah whatever uh, Josh, the difference is the politicizing of Star Wars. When the sequels came out, people were so psychotically politicized. Star Wars, unfortunately, became a rallying point. Yeah, I've noticed that. It's really I think that is, Yeah, that is definitely a part of it, um, especially like, you know, yeah. obviously with like the 2016 and the 2020 election, like that whole thing. Right. Absolutely the case. I feel I feel that way. But I also think that a lot of companies, including Star Wars, step their toe in it a bit because I think they underestimated how abrasive some of this messaging was going to come across within that sort of craziness. Like, it's almost like, yeah, like I agree with Kinsey, but it's almost like Lucasfilm was like, nah, fuck that. Like it's Star Wars. Everyone will love it. Like no matter what. And then like some of the messaging and some of the things, and then especially the way that Lucasfilm engaged in these topics on social media, it literally seemed like they were like, oh yeah, if you're over here, like we don't like you, want you or acknowledge your criticisms to be valid. Um, so yeah, like that, politicizing of it totally happened but i think like kenzie and i've said this a million times it's to me it's kind of on lucasfilm though 
because like fans are just people and they're just going to act the way they act and the environment is going to affect their perceptions you have a responsibility as a business and a brand to like try to switch that narrative like if the narrative is like we hate half the fucking country i'd probably change that narrative if you're a publicly traded company like that's just absurd how many times do you think i've said the same that same thing many but it, it just goes over their heads and bricks and screws bricks and screws what you hate star wars you're the problem I uh, liked Andor for what it was. It didn't really feel Star Wars-y to me, though, like it was Star Wars without bringing that feeling of awesomeness and wonder, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I get the mindset behind bricks and screws, but my guys, Luke, Anakin, Saber with screws in the hilt, Qui-Gon used a Gillette razor for a walk-in, and all of Naboo is bricked and filmed in Italy. Again, you're not getting it. You're not getting what I said, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Yeah, David. And also, what's the Gillette razor? What is he talking about? I don't understand that. The Gillette razor is the uh, the comlink that he used, but it didn't look like it because he was holding it at the top. It just looked like a comlink. Oh, uh, okay. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, you know, whatever. I guess Andor went over my dumb head because I thought it was meh, but then again, <laughs> I have the intelligence of a brick, so of course I would think that, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's the take. Yeah. That is the take. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate you're you're you don't understand complex stories. Mm -hmm. Star Wars theory is top voice for change in Star Wars. Josh is gaining that. That's why the new fans can't stand it. They cannot stand a majority of fans believe Star Wars is in trouble and that it has been. Wake up, people! Thanks, guys. I think there's some truth in what he's saying. Like, there's this weird resistance to just talking about how bad things are. You know, like it, it almost feels like. Yeah, like you gotta like everything. Top. Yeah, or like there's just this total denial of like shit's bad, bro. Like, and I'm sorry, like shit is bad. <laughs> like, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know yeah. how to how else to say it. So. Yeah, no, me either. I know it's weird. A theory you should check out Generation Tech. Alan has some interesting views on Andor. Ignore the haters. Stay strong, brother. Thanks, man. Generation Tech. I feel like I've watched them before. Meow, 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 meow. No, I get. Do you guys think difference between Marvel and Star Wars is that Star Wars has a fraction of the content, so the Star Wars fans have more time to mull on drama? I think that's part of it, yeah. Yeah, maybe. You know, it's so centric on the Skywalker saga, and now it's like shifting a little bit. It's possible. Yeah, I would say I agree with Matthew, but I also think it's not all created content by Marvel. What I mean is. Again, Marvel relies, <laughs> Marvel relies on hype a lot, speculation, fun, theory crafting. The amount of Marvel content that is created is actually far exceeding the amount of content that they even make. And to be honest with you, they're making a little bit too much. They need to back it up. So I think that's part of it. But again, it's kind of the type of content and then how the fan base talks about the content. That's a totally different thing right now. Totally different. Do what must be done. Theory and Josh, love you. Keep be you all the love from true fans. Can't wait to see and hear Bad Batch with you guys. Yeah, it's going to be Hell fun yeah. to watch parties again. I like that uh, Vegeta thing he's got going on, too. Oh, it's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Rick <laughs> says, hello, Mr. Theory. We've had enough of the brick slander. <laughs> the day of reckoning has come. <laughs> Will will now suffer the wrath <laughs> of the brick top. I mean, brick army. <laughs> nice, dude. We shall show that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great thanks Rick. Uh, uh w power skill hannah solos all of lucasfilm fair fair and also you watch too much cereal bro yeah Andor was overall decent aspects i liked and didn't finale was very good and was the acting but pacing was all over the place but say that you get pounced on toxic positivity is real oh yeah the toxic po it's almost like they had to prove my point, bro. Like they couldn't help themselves to the degree to which people were like, I don't even understand what toxic positivity is. And then they put on a five day clinic and now everybody gets it. They're like, oh shit. Now I understand. Yeah. Maybe, it was, uh, it was that maybe not people kind of get it. I, I think there are a lot of people that are like, whoa, what's wrong with all you guys? Agreed. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. Like, I don't know if people realize how fucking silly they look, bro. They think you look silly. They look ridiculously silly. Yeah. Like literally, like y'all look like clowns. 
like sharing that shit, like just the, 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 the animus that's coming out of you because of offhanded comments. It's wild. Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of like my, it's really whatever. Like, No, I mean, that's the best way to take it for sure. 100%. Yeah, like, uh, okay, cool. What do you all want for Christmas? Also excited for DC's future. Cautiously, Dr. Fate is one of my all-time faves. So happy about his debut recently. I want what some Warhammer for stuff for Christmas, man. Yeah. For Christmas, I want... I don't really want anything. I could use a little peace, you know, just a little peace and quiet. A couple chill ass nights with the fam. And then maybe a new Warhammer army. Let's go. Give me the models. Yeah, I don't really want anything. Oh, did I skip some here? Oh. Dun, 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 dun. I think we might get that Mando three trailer on christmas that'd be kind you of think fun. so yeah it'd be cool elisa says i need a what if episode on what if andor teamed up with maul to defeat Ahsoka. anakin and daddy palps wait what Ahsoka. what you if a read Ahsoka... her chat wrong my bad i can't i have it. andor on the brain because it's such a phenomenal well-written show and i don't understand why people don't get it what if episode on what if ahsoka teamed up with maul to defeat anakin and daddy palps like at the end of season seven i actually love that idea like what if she actually would have done it Things would have been mad different, dude. I'm actually writing a fan fiction about that right now. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Let, uh, let me show you how far I've gotten. Um. <laughs> nice, bro. <laughs> Killing <laughs> November twenty third, <23rd. laughs> killing it, dude. As far as I got so far, well, you just you know, just letting those ideas percolate. Yeah, you know, just I get letting it. them marinate in my head a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Yeah. Wow. All caps here. I just watched Solo again. Wow, Amelia Clark. I would walk from England to Indonesia just. To sit on a chair she sat on in 97. Oh, my effing God. My elegant, classy queen means more to me than my wife. Wow. I'm sure she'll get the message. Yeah, she is actively seeking you out. Thank you, Adam. As we speak. Yes. Mm. I hope that, I uh, hope it works out. Could you imagine? Yeah, that's, yeah, who knows? Did you guys Apparently mean? that, well, there was that girl, you know that YouTuber SS Sniper? Yeah, I've heard of her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she actually Sniper Wolf or something. I, yeah, she actually started dating just some random dude from her chat because the dude said some like absolutely ridiculous thing in chat that she actually thought was funny and then like actually hit him up. Like that dude's like the king simp that like actually won. Nice dude. Yeah. Pretty well. Question for Oh, we read this one, Alex, when she was on stream. She said yeah, she has to did, wear yeah. uh she has to have bodyguards and or mm -hmm. just hats and sunglasses now mm -hmm. star wars suffers from lack of characters that can connect to each other the best characters are millennia apart marvel has a connected universe that's fair i think that is a part of the formula i see what you're saying you're saying so marvel is a little more cohesive well yeah they just have a bigger toy box that they can pull out at almost any time and then like comic book logic is like just like bullshit <laughs> so yeah. like it doesn't matter like they'll just figure out a way to oh multiverse or oh time travel you know what i mean Maybe this is a strange thing to say, but had no idea fans could be so toxic until I saw theory being attacked all over social media. Didn't see it this ugly before personally. Also, welcome Hannah. Yeah, I think a lot of people got to look under the hood a little bit and see what it's uh, see what's going on. <laughs> Surprised it took them this long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't think sequels will get a comeback like prequels because social media wasn't a thing back then as it is today, especially when kids these days be popping out the womb already getting an iPhone. Yep. Things are a little different. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. 
No characters interesting compared to the prequels. New kids aren't attached to them compared to the prequels. Toy selling shows. Nobody likes sequels. The toy selling is definitely a part of it for sure. Hmm. Um, yeah, it just didn't seem to resonate with people. And the one thing about the prequels is you cannot deny those t- those toy sales numbers, dude. Like that shit was huge. You'd go into Toys R Us and there'd be just this wall of Star Wars. You know what I mean? Now it's like this little bitty section. Right. And they're all full. Hmm. W.C. Lear says, The sequel trilogy won't age well. I'm almost 50 and could tell during the prequels that kids love them and would grow up to take over the narrative. I'm glad because I love the prequel trilogy. The new gen Star Wars gateway is Mando Filoniverse. Yeah, I agree with that. And Clone Wars. I think Clone Wars mm-hmm. brought more young Clone-iverse. fans to Star Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like his stuff has brought more young fans to Star Wars than anything other than that Disney is trying to do. Yes. Hey guys, I look forward to Mondays because these streams to witness the chaos of Star Wars fandom. Luke Soko for life since we'll never get Mara Jade. Hmm, nice. I see some interesting comments today. Like hmm. different people in the chat. I think there's a lot of people from Twitter that are dropping in. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are just trying to uh, kind of say we're wrong see, or like, like what's... continue to. Yeah, yeah I, see, mm-hmm. I see a lot of different comments. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. Oh, well. True. Thanks for dropping in, guys. Um, and thanks, Figlet. Cool name. Yo, Peter B. I'm 26, and I do kind of miss the old days when I watched something and really focused on my own opinion of it. But I do also like seeing other people's. Yeah, I like seeing other people's opinions as well. Yeah, it's different, and I think there's sort of a sense of nostalgia for that from back in the day. I personally like... I think that imagination played more of a role in like you're in mine's childhood than maybe it does today because it's a little more like social and social pressures so i do yeah you know i i really liked my upbringing you know and like it was a good time to be a kid yeah. um but i also really like obviously what i do and the way to reach people and you know so it's it's still cool now it's just different yeah it was cool i remember you know watching the prequel trilogy on my dvd and like rewinding stuff you know you gotta wait everything was you had to you had to wait for everything rewind it here replay a scene do it in slow motion movie ends and then you're thinking about the movie you know you're not rushing to the internet to see what other people are thinking necessarily right you create your own consensus and ideas about it and then you're playing with your action your, your action figures and your toys and your lightsaber and you're like just entertaining yourself and imagining different things and and that imagination is growing and becoming stronger stronger and um yeah it's it's it was different different world it certainly was different world i don't like bricks they're red and rectangular and annoyingly everywhere in andor anakin brick liquor nice at first, I initially liked The Last Jedi, but months later, I realized all those Snoke theories meant nothing. Everyone else <laughs> came to light. F The Last Jedi. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of part of it. You know, like a lot of people talk about The Last Jedi and destroying Luke, and I think that's absolutely fair. But it also kind of shat all over the fan theory community. Like mm-hmm. there was a like literally it felt like Ryan was like it wasn't just him saying like your Snoke theory sucks. It was him saying like, I hate people getting like having that kind of fun. Yeah. And I don't I don't want that kind of fun in Star Wars anymore. And like that massively hurt the fandom. Your Snoke's theory sucks. Like, dude, that really was damaging to the fandom. Cause then it you became mentioned- like, well, why would I invest in these fan theories or why would I speculate and have all this when they're just gonna, you know? Yeah, it's like imagine you create something that's so compelling that people are wondering so much about. And you go and shit on it as the person who created that idea. It's wild. Not even the person well, who created that idea. Because JJ did. Yep. Oh, well. Yep. Much love is always theory. And Josh, screw the haters. Thanks, Darren. That's a cool concept. With a screw and screw then just the haters. The haters. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like that. Andor is real Star Wars. Says Zico nice. Alpha. Nice, dude. In my opinion, I feel like The Rise of Skywalker is just as bad, if not worse, than The Last Jedi, only because mm-hmm. Palpatine coming back completely undermines Anakin being the chosen one and bringing balance. Oh, yeah, it's bad. I would argue 9 is way worse, 
But I just think that like, what were they going to do? Like seven or rather eight just kind of broke it. So unless they were just going to ride with that, like, I don't know what else they could have done really. Mm. But no. nine's bad. Like, dude, make no mistake. Rise of Skywalker is poopy buttholes. Well, nine was essentially, let's look at eight. Let's look at everything fans don't like or toxic fans don't like. Let's do that. Or yeah, let's, let's, let's let's fix that. Right, exactly. Yeah. It, so let's redact a... everything in eight. And, and it was just like, yeah, we literally didn't really make any progress. It's a checklist and a scavenger hunt. Yeah. That ends in this just like, like what? CGI fuck fest of lightning. And it's like, it's like everything wrong with Hollywood spec. Like, I'm sorry, dude, but Palpatine would not die that way. First of all, he would have transferred his essence into a younger body, which was an idea that they had with Matt Smith coming along. Yeah. Which would have been so cool. But, or how about yeah. having a plan that makes fucking sense? The guy that took over the galaxy behind the scenes of 10,000 Jedi strong police force. And then that guy doesn't have an actual plan. Like it's so, it's such a joke. Do yeah. you think Thrawn will be the main villain of Ahsoka? Uh, I think Thrawn will be the main villain. <sighs> it's hard to say. I don't know if he'll be the main antagonist of the show, but I think that he, because he's with Ezra, I think so, will be something of the MacGuffin. You really do? I almost yeah. feel like other Force users, like maybe Barris is rumored, right? Um, I almost feel like there could be other villains. And then, like, they're looking for Thrawn, but somebody's trying to kill them or something. I don't know. It'd be interesting. Yeah, we'll uh, see. Wagner Phillips. And everyone who sent a super chat, we're still getting to all of yours. We're not skipping anyone. We're uh, still reading them. So thank you. Thoughts on the Ahsoka Tano show? Very excited for it. And excited it's my to most anticipated project of next year. Anakin and Ahsoka together. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Is literally like more. I'm more hyped for that than anything Marvel. Anything. Ahsoka is the one. <clears throat> really enjoying this dynamic. Hoping to see Hannah more often to offer different perspectives. Blessings to you all. Yeah, man, for sure. And she's uh she's good with her perspectives and she can explain herself well. Yeah. So yeah. hell yeah, yeah. I like the fact that she has different opinions too than us. Mm -hmm. And has such a beautiful mind. The fandom is better for it. Thanks guys for having her on. Do a Nerd Theory 2022 rewind of y'all's highlights oh, that'd be fun that would be yeah. kind of fun yeah heck yeah man hannah's hannah's a good voice to have for sure actually if um if someone would like to do that like to make that uh go ahead and post that on any one of your channels uh you can keep all the ad revenue from it if you want uh but i'm going to download it and re-upload it on my channel as well so yeah if you want to do yeah, that, that go for fun. it would be fun to see you all are awesome. Looking forward to Steel City Con. Going to meet a Martin oh, Cove cool. and William Zapka Cobra Kai. Right on, man. Very cool, man. That's awesome. That is cool. Yeah. It's good to see the cons thriving again, you know? Yeah, I'm happy about it. Oh, come on, Andor, with the names. Serial Guy. Cyril. Emo Robot equals B2 Emo. Oh, damn, they're right on the money. Yeah. Yeah, cereal, always eating cereal. Clever. Yeah. What made you choose Blood Angels and Warhammer? I'm more of a Dark Angels guy myself. Uh, Sanguinius. I mean, that golden locked vampire boy with wings. Just fucking awesome. And then I love the lore that all of them, when they rage out, they get they, they can go into this like kind of rage mode. It's almost like hulking out. And they yeah. literally think they're Sanguinius when he's fighting against um, Abaddon, like there's this crazy like moment where like this one really powerful character, Sanguinius is like killed by this evil character. And every one of his space Marines can rage out and go into a trance where they go back to that battle, but they think they're Sanguinius. And so they'll kill like anybody in their way because they only recognize themselves and enemies. It's like really cool. So that's part of the reason why. Josh should invite crazy guests. Probably. K2SO and or season two. Yeah, definitely. I think so. Yeah. It's probably the emo droid is put into um, a K2 droid. 
Yep, that's my Sith Warrior character in the Old Republic. Yeah, looks nice. very cool. Looks cool. Yo, great stream, boys. Curious, when's Nerd Theory's birthday? Oh, uh, when is our first show? I don't know. <sighs> yeah, cool. we'd have to. Yeah, we'd have to go back. Yeah, we'd have to go back. Somebody else should figure that out for us. Reverse question for both of you: uh, Marvel plus Star Wars CEO job for seventy-five million a year. Y'all have complete creative control, but anyone can veto. And often would in this scenario. So money oh, for then. title. I wouldn't have full control then. Well, you'd have full creative. It's like the reverse of what he said before. So like you'd have full creative control, but other people could just veto you. Is what he's saying. Mm, then no. no mm. I want to be able to veto. I think I could make that work. It would kind of depend on who's like the one vetoing it. though. Are they vetoing it because they're an asshole or do they like have a vision? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got my friend in the Star Wars through your videos and Andor. He's a fan now, except sequels, though. Also, Bleach is effing top tier. Dude, it's so good. It's blowing my mind. It's so good. Theory and Hannah need to date. Josh, get some, too. Wait, what? That's very interesting. Jesus. Bob Chapek, Bob Iger. They need Bob, the builder, to fix this shit. KK got to go. Keep up the good work, boys. Yeah, I think I think Keiko will be gone. I believe the John Campius report. I think they shall be gone in the middle of the next year, and I think that that'll be great. Yeah, that'd be lovely. It'll be lovely times. Robert V. Screw the theory sabers. Get me some of them theory bricks. Say strong boys. Keep. Is that the? Uh, is that is that maybe what I need to do? Just have some bricks and with a T on it. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. That's it. Theory brick. Did y'all watch Cyberpunk anime? Thoughts? Yo, shit was lit, dude. Dude, it was so good. It was just like fun. It was like dumb fun, uh, but it was cool. It was cool. Disney screwing up brick time, but nerd theory rocks. Hey, Travis, get theory to accept Luke Soka is completely canon. Is that your birthday wish or something, D man? Yeah, that's what, what are you talking about, British? Oh, shit. Arlo, what's going on, man? You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy than Twitter. Don't let them get to you. The fans worth having will stick with you. Thanks, Arlo. Yeah, that's all I care yep. about. Just For the sure. ones that are with me. Otherwise, uh, yeah, everyone else has their own opinion. That's For cool. sure. Josh, how excited slash anxious are you about your comic? Theory, would you ever consider doing the same? No matter our views, I will still always appreciate you too. Thanks, Alfonso. Um, I'm not really anxious at all. I'm really excited about it, but like... I've kind of chosen to kind of delay it into next year because a lot of my freelance guys that are like working on it, like they're just taking on so much work right now and things are just like slow. So I'm kind of delaying it a little bit, but uh, no, I'm not really anxious about it at all. Like I'm so excited, man. Like I was a writer way before I was a YouTuber and I worked in comics before I ever thought I would do YouTube. Like I actually remember, bro, like this is kind of funny. I literally thought, back in the day that i didn't want to be a youtuber because i thought comic publishers wouldn't take me seriously if i approached them and i was a writer but i was also doing youtube like that was literally i thought that where i was like no nah, dude like people don't take youtubers seriously like i'm not gonna do that but uh yeah now it's like are you kidding me like the youtube thing is such a gift because i'll be able to find a big audience hopefully you know for the book way easier than i would have before yeah that's true this is real. Tuvlophobia is a fear of bricks. Oh, well, what? maybe that's what I have. Maybe that's what I got. Now they're making fun of my disability. Yeah, right? Ableist. Gotti. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we addressed this last week. It's very unfortunate. Uh, men's mental health is definitely something that uh, should be focused on a little bit more in society. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I hope he rests in peace. I hope that his loved ones are uh, you know, go through the grieving process. Yeah, that was a tough one for sure, but it's all about the money. This is Geekton 101. <laughs> I gotta go tinkle. I got you. I can't check the feeling that Yoda let the galaxy burn because the force was out of balance toward the light side. There's too many hits, uh, hints throughout. Yeah, there is a little something to that. You know, that's why I think I really like that thing where um Dave, y'all remember it was a couple years ago where he literally had that. It was during, I think, the Mando roundtable. 
and he recontextualizes and explains the duel of the fates. And he's talking about Qui-Gon and all these different things. Well, the thing that was really interesting in that was Dave literally says Yoda's wrong. The Jedi are wrong and Qui-Gon's ahead of them. Like Qui-Gon was right. You know what I mean? Like that's essentially what he says. And like, that's so true. And I don't know what's going on in the high Republic, but I remember when the high Republic first was announced, my thought was what the, well there has to be this big secret like yoda has to know this big secret about the sith from that time that he kept from the council and maybe the whole republic and then i think what uh lavery's talking about is of course the fact that if you look at clone wars to a degree yoda knows that order 66 is coming or whatever he he sort of knows that this horrible thing's happening and he like lets it happen there's a lot of hints that maybe yoda wasn't the 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 totally awesome dude um that we thought he was yo is anybody in chat actually reading the high republic have they hinted at that at all that like yoda had a uh had a secret or he was hiding something because that would be cool man that would be real chill no oh well that's unfortunate Hmm. Well, Yoda is totally awesome. Hmm. Do you think Ender's mom saying try in her monologue was supposed to be a small shot at Yoda? I didn't see it that way, but maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't see it that way, but you would never change, dude. Here for the long haul. Thanks, secrets. Amen. I'm just going to call you Sand from now on. Sand? struggling to get more subs without throwing it in people's faces only at 200 with uh 260k channel view start doing new vids per day but it is tiring mm -hmm. yeah man it's really really tricky you got to catch a wave and you've got to you got to kind of play the algo game a little bit um it's a tough tough game though yeah i would say make videos you enjoy talking about and then it'll never really be tiring True. Um, yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Will we see a Thrawn versus Krennic argument about Death Star slash Thrawn's tie in Andor season two? That would be cool. It's kind of an underdeveloped plot line because again, Thrawn was fucking right, and they should have just made all of the tie destroyers or whatever. You guys are the goats of Star Wars content. No question, been a fan since before Mando. Wish they gave the same effort for all the live action, and it's just Adam S. Oh, yeah, Adam Sandler. I thought so. Oh, it's just Adam S. Okay, right on. The One Piece is real. I mean, One Piece is dope. Just bought the Blacked Out Order 66 hat. So hyped. Dude, thank you. Thank you so much. Everything is linked in the description, guys. $20 holla from What's Star up, boy? Sith. What's up, boys? Sorry, I'm late. Just got off work. I know I'm usually one of the first few supers. You were probably worried. We were worried, but it's good to know that you're okay. I saw the thumbnail has non-Star Wars bricks, and I'm sure this will be a fun rewatch. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> what was uh, the fear of bricks? Tavolofia? Yeah, something like that. Top, top of Lapa Lapa. Oh, let's see. Your head cannon that Sebulba flashed Anakin multiple times during the pod race to throw him off. The trauma from Sebulba was Anakin's villain arc. Wow. Okay. The villain origin story. I like that. Sebulba, man. Oh, yeah. I ordered my Black Door Order 66 trucker hat. Super hyped for it. When's the Xmas one dropping? Yeah, we're going to get those started probably in a week, and then they should be on the store. Um, relatively soon just in time for you guys to hopefully get them for christmas with like a rush order or something if you want um but yeah that's the whole point so that they show up before christmas so yeah. we're trying to get them out very soon did you ever hear the tragedy of darth plagues the wage this is for josh's birthday diaper fund and for the nerd Venger theater he'll be renting out for secret wars thanks for the real and honest takes guys thank you chase oh yeah i can't wait for that man they pushed it to 2026 though now did they? Yeah. Hmm. Should make, make 66, 66, 66 Oh, with a brick pattern. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. 
It's pretty good. Oh, pretty, man, pretty. I'm going to send an email right now. Josh, you pretty, actually, actually, brother. It's pretty good. Kylo Trilogy 1, prequel to Episode 7, 2. After the events of Episode 9, 3. Fast forward years where Keanu Reeves plays an older version of Kylo. Mm, interesting. I like it. I like it. I like where your head's at. Seems pretty sure. Why not use an assembly like the Geonosians instead of people who need to be fed and imprisoned? Ford used it because it's super cheap than people. Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I guess it's kind of one of those things where they just needed a bunch of workers and droids are probably expensive to operate like that. I mean, I assume it's just cheaper to use human prisoners. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Sent off. Yeah. Maybe we're going to have some, uh, some, some merch coming soon. Nice. That. Dude. That'd be funny. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, hilarious. What's up, Thomas? Thanks, man. You didn't ask us anything. You know what the, the... Thanks, Ogle. Thanks, Ming. Who wins? Who wins? Rebels of Soka or 2003 Clone Wars Grievous? <sighs> that is a tough one. Uh, I don't know, man. 2003 Clone Wars Grievous was pretty monstrous. He was hard as nails, dude. He was, he was like a horror movie. He was like a horror feature. Yes. Contrary to belief, we are not aliens. Yeah. Dude, real funny. The uh, So they did the holiday special, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, and it's only like 40 minutes long, but it has so many more aliens than all of Andor. It's crazy, dude. Mm. Like, I watch that and I'm just like, oh, look, aliens in space makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? Like, it was wild, bro. Yeah. But Anderson, I wonder if I never made the brick comment and I said there's no aliens in there, people would still be like, "Fucking no aliens, bro." <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. I'm gonna make sure I make more ridiculous comments. Uh, well, thanks, what guy? He said happy birthday to me. I oh shoot, I didn't even read it. That's <laughs> good. He's uh, uh, happy I'm birthday, Josh. I'm a theory fan. You have really grown on me the last two years. Good luck, brother. Thank you so much. That's very sweet. Thanks for catching me. What up? Wanted to just say thanks for another Monday pod and support the show. Just bought a new setup and going to start making some content. I love with the community and talk Star Wars. Let me know if you're down ever. That's awesome, dude. I hope you have the best fun, the most amount of fun with it and uh, the best success with it. Um, yeah. Hell yeah, man. You've taken your first step into a larger world. Into a more toxic world. Yep. Hey, Theory and Josh. Love you guys. Theory, I know you've said you're past it. It's just because it's so easy to be negative and very hard to be positive. Thank you for who you are. I found you from Mando Season 2 finale reaction. Hashtag bricked. Thanks, man. That's cool. Yeah, I think, Hashtag you know, uh, we all evolve and change. So, what size hoodie are you wearing? This is a. I don't know. Is this an XL or. No, this is a large. This is a large. The hat is too small for me. It's a small medium, so I would get a large XL. But I'm not wearing anything under this, and I've been wearing it for like a little while now. Um, yeah, I am 195, 200 pounds. I'm five foot ten, and it's pretty comfy. I think it's like the perfect size. I think maybe even like an XL would be if you want it baggy. It would be like pretty comfy, but. Yeah. Yo, random question. Are you going to watch Willow? The Willow movie this week? Sure. Are you really? I don't know what it's about, really. I know it's a movie that George made a long time ago, and this is the sequel, but I don't, I've never seen it. Yeah, I, don't, I, just, I just don't know if I'm about that life. I don't know. What, I really don't know anything about it. Mm. Me neither. <laughs> I've always known that Star Wars fandom was toxic, but damn. 
and or lovers <laughs> really made me realize how effed up it really is. Since when were you required to have a film degree to enjoy a show like Andor? Yeah, right. Gotcha. Yeah, I know. Oh, well. Sad. Tis what it is. Put Hayden as Anakin and Ahsoka bring balance to the fandom. Here he is. Sorry, yeah, he's going to be in it. Yeah, he's, he is, he's yeah, getting confirmed. villain. Yeah, 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 ye
the way the dialogue goes, the music, mm. the pacing of the show, the lack of aliens, the guns look realistic, screws, bricks, all these different things. They all work together to just not have it feel like Star Wars. Like, I don't think that's that crazy. Yeah. And above all, I like the show, but go figure. I know, right? Like, you like the show. That's what's funny. Uh, stopped collecting for three years when comic ended. Found out they were releasing in color, so I got back in. Out of 193 issues, I'm missing about 65, give or take, from the original run. Issue one goes for, like, what? 20K. Yeah, dude, it's very hard to find that first one. Because at the Damn. time, it was just, like, a black and white book, too. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Star Wars has turned me into a grump. I need more Tales of the Jedi type content. Yeah. Yes, oh. man. And I think it's coming, Doth Ghost Rider. You? Next year should be good. I don't get the hype over Andor. In all fairness, I gave up after two episodes. Rogue One was cool, but the movie was enough. Star Wars without the Force and lightsaber is not Star Wars for me. Yeah, I agree with that. I tend to agree with you there, Rickard. Rickard. Anyone else? Anyone else? The cinematography, color tones of the prequels feels too real to really make it feel like Star Wars, especially brightness of lightsabers. Oh yeah, there's a there's something to be said there. Yeah. Honestly, bricks and screws is just an easy meme. It is kind of an easy meme. Yeah. 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 I'm glad people are having mm -hmm. fun. Been a subscriber since 17. I love both of your content and my blue Order 66 hat. What is y'all's opinion on a show focused on Darth Malgus and his era? Would absolutely love that. And thanks for your support. Thanks for being a subscriber. Thanks for even grabbing merch. It's above and beyond. Yeah, for sure. That's, That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Darth Malgus and everyone, uh, show would be sick too. Everyone who buys merch, please tag me on Instagram. I'd love to share you guys. I'd love to comment and uh, engage with you all and to see you guys with it. When are you going to finish Alien Isolation? I don't know. Is that a game? Yeah, it's it was pretty freaky. Hmm. You're like in the ship, and the ship is broke, breaking down, and freaking alien escapes in the ship. He's just like eating random people, and you're like trying to hide and get out of there. Seems kind of fun. Yeah. Luthien Rail is one of the surviving Jedi from Order 66. His explanation of giving up everything, which would equate to attachments, would make sense. I have a I hard time so. believing that guy's a Jedi. I don't think so. I highly doubt it. The, the dead, dead are bricked. Bricks. They mix your ashes with mortar and local stone dust. Put your name on it and fire it up. You become a block of ferrix brick. Then they find you a wall. Yes, but not the wall I was meaning. We never actually saw the wall, I don't think. Whatever, dude. Like, holy shit. <laughs> I know, right? Fuck. Jesus. <laughs> Fuck. That's My funny. God. I know. It's just funny, dude. People are so bothered by it. Okay, other than Dave Filoni and John Fryer, who do you want to replace Kathleen Kennedy as chief of Star Wars? Uh, Kevin Feige, for sure, for me. That would be That would be my pick. Um, anybody James Cameron James Cameron would be Fuck. great I've um, been a fan for years your <laughs> love of the prequels made Thank me you. feel right at home since all my friends hate those movies and made me feel outcasted thank you for all that you do very generous 50 there y'all be right back I gotta go tinkle okay right won't let me super on arcade is chat set right I think so that's weird maybe try on your phone or on your computer that sucks. Josh and Theory ignore the hate. These Andor stands don't live in reality. It's not Star Wars. Numbers don't lie. Tales of the Jedi is goaded. I can't wait for season two. And like for Bad Batch and shit. Like the next animated thing that we have is like it feels like more real Star Wars is coming. I very much like Star Wars Joe Rogan experience. Is that our show? Is that your setup? Had Padme lived, how do you think this would have impacted or changed the course of Vader's life moving forward? Oh, he would have been conflicted forever and he would have tried to control her. There's so many great Star Wars media, games, comics, cartoons that don't at all feel Star Wars or fit into Star Wars but are fondly remembered as some of the best pieces of Star Wars. Discuss. Uh, like what? Are you like do you, are you talking about Shadows of the Empire or like what in particular does not feel like Star Wars? Because for me, I, everything felt like Star Wars. I think 
Personally, I hope Andor Season 1 was a nice character, world-building build-up for a nice action-packed Season 2. We'll see, but one can hope. Much love from Alaska. Hell, that's cool. Is it real cold right now? It's starting to get real cold here, so I only imagine it's probably freezing up over there. Uh, but yeah, I think Season 2 will probably have a lot more to offer, and we'll see a lot more of the characters that we saw in Rogue One, which would be neat. It's like a Karen culture or something. It's unreal that peeps act like this. Like the super cringe vids of them out of their mind, crazy. It's scary. They vote. Yeah. Um, I think it's safe to say it's just like a certain political spectrum of people. But who knows? It, it seems like Star Wars has gotten very political uh, since Disney took over. It's not really. Or maybe that's just the world. <coughs> maybe that's just Twitter. Maybe uh, people in this chat don't understand censorship versus not wanting a toxic person in the chat, regardless of criticism is valid. Yeah, that's unfortunately the truth, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, here. he was like commenting about that thing. I mean, dude, I'm just so far past that. Like, people are Ooh. like, there's what? like, pe when I was, somebody was like claiming that I like censor and stuff like that. And it's like, no, it's not censoring. Oh. It's like literally like, dude, if you're just a butthole, why would I want you to like... Up, it, if you ever worked a job and like some real annoying person comes in and is like affecting your job, like get them out of there. Like period. It's not like censorship. Yeah. <coughs> Nick. I have been a fan since the beginning and I am a hardcore Star Wars fan. My cousin has a port. Basically, when she was one, they discovered a tumor surrounding her brain. She's now oh. seven. Hearing others with the struggle helped me. Ah, uh, man. And, like, sometimes you just keep that port in for a long, long time. Like, my cousin was going to have it in for the next five years. It's pretty wild. It's weird, yeah. I think I started beating it when I was, like, four or five, and then they took it out finally when I was six. Yeah. They're pretty precautious with that. And I'm sure like you, you've already been told all of this stuff, but like, it was fascinating to me that like, even my cousin's kids will have to start getting tested like way earlier because he had, it could be in the genes, the really. cancer. Right. Exactly. So like, yeah, it's pretty wild how all that works. Well, mine was, um, it wasn't, uh, what is it? Hereditary. It wasn't uh, passed down. It was just literally a <laughs> luck of the draw. It was a malfunction mm. in my brain. That created too many white blood cells. So they were all hmm. killing me. Hmm. Shitty. Do y'all think they should invest money into a CW style show between episode one and episode two? Well, first of all, you just did an oxymoron. Investing money and CW style don't go together. But or a CW style Luke Skywalker show. Oh, Clone Wars. He's not saying the network CW. He's saying Clone Wars style show. Yeah. Okay. Or Clone Wars style Luke show after episode six. Both would be awesome. Hell yeah, Dante. Hell it'd yeah. Be yeah, that'd be cool. I thought you were talking about like the CW network. I'm like, bro, you ever watch like Arrow and The Flash? Like, bro, they ain't got no budget. Uh, <laughs> yo, this is kind of an interesting one. Nerd Responsibility says, do you think Luthien Rail could be Rail Avaros, Dooku's first apprentice. He had a blue lightsaber, Luthien blue kyber necklace. Mm. No, that's what the previous guy said, didn't he? Well, he said he could be a Jedi from Order 66. Oh, I see. Rail Avaros yeah. was kind of different. Yeah, no, definitely not. I still don't see it, but it's a little more plausible because Rail was totally different than most of the Jedi. He was, but yeah, he definitely, I don't think that would be him. First of all, I think he would be pretty old at this point very because yeah. he was old older than qui-gon when obi-wan was like still a panel one yes so he would be of like ancient he'd be old as fuck <laughs> <laughs> if he was luthan he'd be like hey what was i saying <laughs> exactly yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Jesse? I like that member of the art. Would be wild if George made the next movie. I can picture the trailers not showing any footage with Star Wars music playing and just some cryptic text. He would be real. Hype would be real and fans would run to the theaters. Oh, well, God. can you imagine if they did like the really oh old God. school type like trailer for the Lucas thing? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it's like something. And then George is like a little faster and, like, and more intense. Created and directed by George Lucas. 
the maker's boner back. like oh yeah dude. oh my god yeah be pretty hype love your content been a godzilla fan but star wars is a close second any thoughts on boba showing up in mando 3 i think it could happen yeah i think all the sh all the characters are going to be interchangeable at this point yeah yeah i think boba should be in there maybe not the whole season but maybe after they wrap up this mandalore stuff he like shows up or something i don't know for god's sakes get him to not be mayor well it's like if mando was in the boba show i think it's only fair true i've said it for a long time these new age fans are straight up plague on the franchise talk to andor shows about george they hate him slash his work it's not unanimous camo so i don't want to yeah. paint in a broad a brush because i've had that like sort of like knee-jerk reaction before it's not all of these younger newer fans some of them they go in they get a deep appreciation for george joseph campbell all that sort of stuff but it definitely like i can see where that perception comes up because there are a lot of newer fans that don't like george lucas or just reject what star wars was before um and maybe even prefer prefer the disney version of it right right um yeah i see what you're saying though i love star wars i love andor can we be friends um according to the internet no we, can. we could try. We could lock our I mean, tusks together. I like liked Andor, animals, so we can so. like potentially be friends, but you can't be friends with Josh. Hell no, nah, bro. I don't want to hear about that shit. Oh. I wish this podcast was actually topics instead of just getting donations the whole time. Oh, well. Mm. Well, so Mandalorian, that... I, I like your profile picture. Did you know that I actually paid for that? And now it's being yeah. used everywhere. So that was actually yeah. my photo. Yeah. Think about that. In, I, I'm you glad you're enjoying it, though. Yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Looks good. It looks good. Looks great. Appreciate it. I like it. Any chance Any they, chance can, they can slide into Zon? Uh, they could do a version, maybe. <laughs> I mean, you'd think they would have done it by now, but yeah, they technically could. Yeah, I don't think they uh, even consult Zon, sadly. Mm -hmm. That's Lionel. true. That character was named Brick. It's kind of interesting. Mm. Mm. Sick. She copped a blacked out hoodie, sending positivity and love, Brianna Rodriguez. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brianna. Appreciate that. I hope you enjoy it. No lightsabers. It's not Star Wars. Such a childish effing take. If you want more of the same Dave Filoni fan service, then go rewatch the prequels, says Jared Trevor. Dude, Jared Trevor, I'm sure you got a lot of friends. I'm sure that you go to a lot of cool parties and people just gravitate towards you because um, mm. you seem like a charismatic motherfucker. Oh, well, okay. Um, three, I think you were right when you said that once you went from 1.5 mil subs to 3 million, you received more negativity. I don't think it's a coincidence. Know that you're supported by true fans. Thanks, Benjamin. Yeah, you know, Thanks. when I get to 10 million someday, I'm sure it'll be even more crazy, right? It's just the way it is. It's so funny how the same this drama happening right now with Andor is reminding me of the Pokemon community and the current uproar, toxic positivity. Yeah, there is some of that going on right now in the Pokemon community. It's kind of interesting. So, like, the newest game is like, I mean, it's bad. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still enjoying really? it, but like, yeah, its performance is. Its performance is bad, and at this point, I think a lot of the hardcore Pokemon fans are starting to realize that they're just cranking such similar... It's like the Madden thing, right? But they're not really changing it that much. They're just kind of printing money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, like and Trump. then there are people... This year, we put a 12 on the box. Right, 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 right. So, like, there are some people now that are kind of trying to, you know, speak to this criticism, and there's a bunch of toxic positive fans that are like, what are you talking about? This game's awesome. You're just a hater and stuff like that. It's... A... Yep, it happens. Josh, where'd this toxic positivity crap come from? Because honestly, it's it's so lame. Yeah, yeah, it's real lame, man. I'm not sure. I mean, to be honest with you, it kind of feels a little bit like it's coming from uh, like some of the worst things that people criticize, like the the left crowd or like the far left crowd. I actually think that some of those criticisms are actually fair. And that's where a lot of the toxic positivity comes from. It's like, because I feel as though I'm justified and my outcome is positive and I'm being positive, 
I can therefore guilt free be the biggest fucking asshole you can imagine. And the problem is a lot of these people are just they're just assholes, bro. It's not that deep. They're not real thinkers. They don't really have like an actual grip on these issues. Mm. They just want to be assholes. And I think that the toxic positivity thing is sort of this umbrella that these assholes can use to feel justified in just being what they always were which again is an asshole so that's kind of the take mandalore been a super been a star wars super fan since i was since i was a wee bald angry meh like josh <laughs> met many people who are star wars fans in my travels haven't met any toxic ones in person though must just be an internet twitter thing yeah i think there's some truth to that for sure man yeah well the internet is a very safe place where anyone can say whatever they want behind a keyboard and then they go on about their day. It's, um, yeah, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's different. Even, um, if we were to invite any of those people to do a, you know, how many times have you actually done that where we've like dropped a link and we're like, Hey, if you have something to say, you know, here's a link, come on in. Yeah. And nobody ever does. It's always just those just people being, positive being like hey we, we yeah like it's show. like super rare that you actually have that same energy like they usually won't have that same energy when they're like in front of you you know what i mean yeah yeah well it is what it is mm -hmm. guys i love you you guys are getting trapped into just being negative and or has a positive rating let's focus on the fact that it could be a turn in the right direction instead of being negative i disagree with that i don't think we need to um See, you're you're kind of changing your opinion uh, for some sort of a cause or something like you think you're doing a greater good for a community mm. instead of just being real, uh, just having yeah. an opinion. What do you like the show? Do you not like the show? It is literally that simple. There's yeah. no, there's nothing more to it. It's not like, well, you know what? I have to tailor my answer because um, maybe this is a direction in for the the greater good, and and and, and I gotta you know be positive about that and push this positive. It's like no. I don't like the show. I don't like this. No, I love the show. I like this. I don't like the movie. I don't like the, I don't I, I like this movie. I don't like this book. I don't like this game. I like this game. I like this book. Why and why not? I think that's the kind of thing we're supposed to be doing. Otherwise, it's just a whole bunch of fucking phonies out there yeah. that are constantly just riding uh, positive reviews and, and bullshit toxic positivity out of their bum holes to get a free movie ticket or to get some recognition or to be part of a uh, we're positive. It's like, no, you're actually assholes and you don't really have an opinion. You're just kind of sticking to something because you feel like you now have a belonging. Yeah. For the most part. And if you do mm -hmm. really like it, there are thousands of people who really like it here and they voice why they like it. And we are so supportive of that. So I like to just give my opinion as it is. And I don't like to think of, well, what's going to happen if I say I don't like this show? What's going to happen if I say I do like this show? No, that's for you guys to figure out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, the only thing I would add is just like, yo, if I genuinely thought this was a turn in the right direction, I would be positive about it. Like, if I genuinely had that opinion, I'd say it, I'd feel it, I'd speak it, and that would be at least part of the conversation. But it's just, I really don't feel that way. You know what I mean? So, like, I can't change how deep. I feel about it. Right, it's like not that deep. It's like, I can't it's change how deep, I feel bro. about it. Because it's getting good reviews, therefore it might be good for Star Wars. You know, like it's I not just, that. That's it's yeah. as simple as like you going up to someone who's a Star Wars fan, being like, "Did you like this or did you not like this?" Nah, I didn't really like it. it wasn't really for me. Oh, okay, cool. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't <laughs> love the bricks. <laughs> oh you my god, god. Are you... holy, oh, shit. holy shit! I'm gonna make you trending on Twitter and Reddit. It's like, okay, cool. Well, thanks for the yeah. publicity. Appreciate it. Yep. I want a I want trilogy in the franchise that goes the opposite direction. Force users of different sorts, Sith magic, and an alien protagonist. Thoughts? I like it all. Yeah, kind of like the Acolyte. Yeah, hopefully, you know. Yeah, 100%, man. Mm -hmm. I say more Force users, not less. Different kinds, too, you know. Let's get it. Mm -hmm. Hey Theory, just bought a blacked out old 66 hoodie, Thanks, marking it as my first merch as a buy from you. Thanks for the content, Josh and Theory. You've helped me get through some real tough times and still do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Milad. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. yeah. Make sure to tag me on Instagram and I'll be looking through all the tag posts when it does arrive. I love them, dude. 
they're super comfy. Yeah. Andor and sequel Black Series figures were on sale down to the lowest six dollars. Meanwhile, prequel characters you can barely get less than seventy sometimes. True. Yeah, like uh, what is it? This Jar Jar. Dude, like, do you know that Hasbro? For the... <laughs> Damn, for real. I think like, bro, yeah. Just look at Hasbro's stock. Like Hasbro is in Hasbro is fucked, and they've been they're in real bad disarray, dude. Like. I think they've even talked about how Star Wars, this was several years ago, but they even said like a lack of sales on Star Wars merchandise was literally a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Like that's a huge license for them, you know? Yep. I have assembled the screws. We have become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> now we are ready to screw you. I mean, mess you up. <laughs> Damn, bro. Mm. Damn. That's great. Yeah. Uh if only there, there, there wasn't a Monday night. Oh, football. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, just put the football on in the background, bro. You just Yeah. You don't need to be hearing all what they're saying. Watch, yeah, exactly. Mass Effect LE stream. Josh, tell him how good it is. Bro, you ever played that shit? Mass no, Effect? I've not. Bruh. Bruh. What's it gonna take? What can I say to get you to try it out? Nothing. I, I want to try it out. I just gotta finish God of War. I don't have that much time. Yeah, I hear you. Dude, I'm That's telling you, though. My issue. Got to at least play the first one. Incredible story. You love sci-fi stories. Just incredible story. Yeah. <clears throat> Andor is what Star Wars and Empire was. It treated the story a bit more seriously before the tone changed in um, Return of the Jedi. And it was made a bit more silly, which was fine. But I think people longed for that Empire tone again which Andor gives yeah I, I see what you're saying like some people just love that it's set during a time when the empire is reigning and they just love that and they're like yo this shit's awesome like I get it there's all kinds of ways that I think I can totally understand why people like Andor um but yeah just for me it's not no no thanks have you ever checked out these Star Wars radio dramas from the I have but I haven't I've listened to them all they're like each three hours long they're pretty cool. They have so much extra stuff in them. I've never, uh, never checked them out. They're on YouTube. The Getting of Rise of Skywalker is literally copied from Endgame. It does feel like that. Yeah, it and does. I, yeah, I'm all the Jedi. But by the way, every <laughs> movie tried to copy Endgame after that. I remember seeing all the trailers mm -hmm. after that, and they were all like, like the Fast and the Furious was trying to do their version of Endgame. Like everybody was just trying. I mean, of course, it was like the most profitable movie of all time. Avatar retook that, but like people were like, uh, like so yeah, a lot of things were Endgame after Endgame. Yeah. The screws are real, Star Wars. We saw screws allow one of the most influential characters or a generation to survive being stabbed by Vader twice. Reva. Yeah, Reva. I know. I love the way the fifth brother was like yelling at her because she was torturing people because of course they wouldn't want to do that and they're good. Fucking Kenobi. Don't even get me started <laughs> on that shit. Uh, I want to show about the ancient Sith as Vikings. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool. I want more uh, visions, I think. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. But like maybe one one story and just like continue it for like eight episodes. Hmm. Bestman Bolton report that new movie will be the beginning will be will be to begin pre-production at Pinewood Studios London in the spring. What do you think? Fake or true? Um, I don't think they're usually fake. I think usually they're pretty accurate. The Bestman guys, aren't they? The Bestman guys are very good. Uh, yeah. I actually think that that is coming from making Star Wars and not Bestman. And I, okay. I actually did look into it a little bit and uh, it seems as though they're probably filming something, but not sure if it's a movie, not sure if it's a show. Uh, but yeah, it seems like something's rolling at Pinewood. That's kind of cool. Rolling. Rolling. What do you all want to see out of the next trilogy? Uh, young Palpatine. Any answer is going to be Young Palpatine. I want to see the X-Men. Uh, <laughs> love this podcast and the entertainment you guys bring. People out here be wild, but screw them. Truly, <laughs> thank you for the content. Never stop. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, for all join members, I'm going to have to create like a screw emoji and a brick emoji, and y'all going to gonna spam that. Oh, next hell screen, yeah. Okay? Hell so yeah. if you're a member at, at 99 cents a month, you're going to be able to use those and spam the crap. You also get 15% off merch. So if you buy merch, you basically save money for being a member for 99 cents, and you can cancel the membership next month if you want. Hell yeah. Everyone gets mad the order was subject to the Republic, but... What Republic would allow 10,000 Force users 
to be without regulation. Just one forced user gone bad can be terrible. Palps was bound to abuse the obvious, abuse this obvious default. Fair. Yeah, but the thing is that I think there was regulation, by the way. I don't think there's no regulation, but I kind of get what he's saying. Yeah, but the Jedi wouldn't have uh, been so controlled by them. They just kept getting roped in with like little missions here and then. And it's just like, yeah. and in the end, I got to say, the Jedi were the ones that allowed Qui Gon to die because they didn't believe him. Right. Hey, now you're cool, bro. Uh, when episode nine began, why didn't they just say Snow cloned himself? Because he knew Kylo had betrayed him like this grandfather did Palpy. Easy layup to write. Yeah, it's, yeah. Instead, uh, Ryan was like, what if we just cut him in half? Didn't explain That's shit. A really good thought. Oh, why don't man. we do that? That's shocking. He's like, you know, what if we do? This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Dude, he's watching Snoke videos and he's just sitting there getting fired up, right? And is like, just like, I'm gonna fucking kill this guy. <laughs> like, just getting <laughs> fired up, bro. He's just fueled by uh, all that rage. That's a good question, Cat Daddy. Why didn't Anakin Force Ghost just talk to Kylo? Don't know. Why did the dark side? Why did Harrison Ford show up in episode nine? I have no fucking idea. That scene yeah. to this day makes less than zero cents. Yeah. With Jedi Survivor taking place, nine BBY. Do you guys think we will see Cal live action? Tied into Andor or Obi Wan season two. Um, probably Obi Wan. Yeah, I don't see them. Really hoping to see him in some way. Yeah, I think Obi Wan maybe would be more so. What do you guys think, chat? First time, long time. Just wanted to say I ordered the blacked out hat, and my womp rat is now bricked up about T sixteen inches long. Nice, dude. Nice. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Pretty good. Make sure to tag me on IG when you get it. Star Wars means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. 40 years of wildly disparate media, spin-offs, products, retcons, plot twists, merchandise, shows, games, toys, comics, novels, etc. Yes. Yes. I agree. Yes. Obi Wax. Hey guys, much love from Florida. Listening to the book Brotherhood and just realized Anakin stopped to speak with Cal and his master. Could we see Cal in live action? And would it fit in? By the way, God of War does not disappoint. Oh, shit. No, it's pretty good so far. Cal in live action. I hope so, man. I really thought that shit was going to happen in Kenobi. Be neat. Just like Josh's teat. Hey, Theory. I just want the blacked out Order 66 hoodie and hat. Thank you, Nathan. The hoodie will be a weight loss goal for me, so I'm going to work hard for it. Awesome, man. I believe in you. Every time you wear it, I want you to believe that the Force is with you, and I want you to also remember that Josh will be bald one day. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. About Yoda letting the galaxy burn. Yes, indeed. He indeed let that happen. Qui-Gon showed him the future and told Yoda he must not trust anyone, so he never told anyone and trusted in the Force. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit he did. Maybe he owed some money. You have. Maybe he had a no gambling debt with all the Jedi Masters. Yeah, maybe. It's possible. Uh, Ken Reeves needs to play live action Revan. Yeah, he'd Hell be a yeah. good choice. Who would play Bane, do you think, chat? Dave Bautista could be a good Bane. Tom Hardy. Just thought, Hardy just bought blacked out hat, and I've never struggled more with deciding if my head is small, medium, or LXL. I know, dude. Okay, so... um. I don't know how to. <laughs> what are you doing measuring your head? I don't know. Yeah, I'm on a uh, measuring tape. Um, get some melons. Get some different melons. Yeah. What do I? What do I do here? I don't know. This is an iPhone. Here, here's an iPhone. Okay. Here's my head. That help? No, probably not. <laughs> 
That was the iPhone Pro Max. <laughs> so for me, the 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 small medium is too tight. But, okay. And this is the small medium. It's uh, mm. giving me a headache a little bit. Not a headache, but like it's just a little too tight. I uh, the I like the large XL, but with this you could always I guess like cut a little bit if you want. But um. Do they have like a thing on the website that like indicates FlexFit should FlexFit should yeah they should on the FlexFit website they should have measurements because it is a FlexFit hat and they're pretty big so what if Poncrell lived to join Dooku may the force be with you that'd be a fun one yeah I think he'd definitely be a much more formidable force but he went down relatively easy in the end I mean I don't think he would have been much of a challenge for any of the Jedi. Do your lightsabers have screws in them? Do lightsabers have screws in them? Nope. Screws don't belong in Star Wars. Neither do bricks. There's some screw shape in some of them. Like, it looks almost like a Phillips head on some of the things. But I've always thought that that's actually not a screw. And that that's, like, a design uh, thing. There are screws on lightsaber hilts, like Luke's, for example. But th- that's a Graflex handle, it, like, without the parts. So, yes, it does. Yeah, like this design has like a. I think this screw is only in there because of just the actual human shit <clears throat> of like getting that in there. But other than that, like, there's not really any screws. Mm-hmm. Like, there's like these punchy things and stuff like that. You're you're playing into the argument. It's, it's uh <laughs> wish this was on uh battery wasn't dead. Giving Tuesdays tomorrow. Would love to know if y'all know a nerdy charities or personal ones trying to spread it around. That's oh that's nice of you, Eric. Um I'd say any animal shelter would be nice. Yeah, I was just saying Saint Jude's. I think Saint Jude's is the Yeah. We've done a lot one, one of the best, yeah. Done a lot of charities with Saint Jude's, yeah. Just, just to tuned in, but my final thoughts on Andor was that it was a great sci-fi show, but a mediocre Star Wars show. Appreciate your opinion, Josh, as always. Hey, I tend to share in that opinion. Thank you, Brad. Thanks, JCH. Do you enjoy other sci-fi series, Battlestar Galactica or The Expanse, and do you wish Andor would be more like that in pacing and suspense? Um, it'd be cool if Andor had a little bit of action. I've always thought Star Wars is not sci-fi. It's science fantasy. You know, it's the fantasy elements are more important than the mm-hmm. science fiction elements to me. Yeah, sci-fi is very much Star Trek. Yeah, Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica. Uh, and there's good sci-fi, though. I mean, I like sci-fi. But to me, I've always just identified Star Wars as fantasy. Yeah. But it's easy, Matt. It's easy. It's Thanos all day, man. He could literally create 10,000 Jedi. He could turn the 10,000 Jedi into bubbles. It wouldn't stand a chance. 10,000 Vespas driven by Reva or Black Adam with a full set of hair. Black <sighs> Adam, bro. That full set of hair? We whip it back and forth. Whew. Have, Have you noticed you an noticed uptick an in view last moves? week? Um, a little bit. Yeah. Analytics are up. They've been climbing steadily for a bit. But I really appreciate the explanation on sizing of the hoodie. I just bought one right now. You're the goat. Thanks, Augie. Yeah, they, they fit pretty good. They fit true to size, I would say. So, like, this is definitely, definitely a large. It feels like a real large, not like a little tiny large. But also keep in mind, this is worn in. Like, this is quite, quite lived in. Yeah, you've been living in a couple of weeks, bro. Uh, you were talked about in Robert Meyer Burnett's latest episode of Midnight Muse. You should check it out. Also, you should have Rob on the show. I like yeah, Rob. Rob. Seems cool. I've tried like to Rob. reach out in a collab with him before. He said he would do it publicly, and then he ghosted me in the DMs, bro. Because he hates you, dude. Yeah, it's probably because I make fun. I of like Robert. John he's very Kansas. smart. Yeah, he's uh, very, very good at explaining things and and um, explaining his ideas. You all see the Sioka leaks where they have to traverse a mountainous planet in a Chevy Silverado. First bricks and screws, and now this. Shake Fuck, dude. 
It's just getting Why worse. Why has it got to be a Chevy? Why? I don't know. Why couldn't they like have like a Dodge or something? Not to be rude, but when you say the guns look realistic, you do realize the OT guns were literally real decommissioned World War II weapons, right? Yes. But yet they still looked like they belonged to in a galaxy it. far, far away. Um, and especially when you have mm -hmm. original trilogy guns, that was the first trilogy you have established lore now that the guns are supposed to look like how they look, like blasters. And you go throughout the prequel trilogy and you go throughout the Clone Wars and uh, you have an established vision of what blasters are supposed to look like. So when you have something that looks like an AK-47 in Andor, it's a little bit confusing. But perhaps that's because they don't know how to build guns or they, um, not they as in the directors, but the people in the village. And so they were like doing it under the radar kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yo, guys, which Old Republic era Jedi and which do you think deserves a series movie most? Young Palps. Young Palps. Young Palps. Or Revan or, or Malgus or all of them. Screws over, sc screwed over screws. He who has never theorized cast the first brick. Oh, shit. It's getting biblical on us, dude. Damn. Star Wars has always used real guns. D144, blah, 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 blah. They always used real guns. Reason the AK looks so weird is because it's the most well known weapons in the world. Nice. Yes. Yeah. I oh, just, I, I just, like, I get the, the spirit of what this person is saying, but like, you're talking about guns from like the fucking 40s. You know what I mean? Like, this, to say that they've always used real guns is to deny that George and the designers specifically altered these guns and things to make it look like a different world if they were just using real guns they would just have real guns it would be a gangster movie with fucking tommy guns and shit like i understand the like nature of saying that technically speaking some of the designs of the <laughs> blasters were actually modeled off real guns but this fucking bullshit dude where they come in and they're like did you actually know that you're completely wrong about the shit you say it's like no i didn't <laughs> holy shit yeah i don't i've gone to the point where if you guys notice i read stuff like this and i'm just like oh yeah cool yeah. Like, i don't I don't give it energy anymore. I'm tired. I'm tired. I I just do it guns, dude. I must have missed all the bullets and the brass and the fucking... Yeah, man, it's crazy. Shit, you're right. I can't spend energy on it anymore. <clears throat> Yo, Theory, I recently started my Star Wars sleep. I sent you a photo on Instagram through DM if you were able to view it. Oh, cool. My artist absolutely killed it. This is the way. I'll keep my eye out for it. <clears throat> if you can, tag me in it, because that's usually easier than me seeing a DM. Geek dumb. Yeah, what's up, Danny? Andor was better than the original trilogy and even the Bible. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, such great writing. Star Wars is saved. Hooray. Kathleen Kennedy rules. I hope Brian does season two. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, well done, bro. Well done. <coughs> he went hard in the paint. Well done, dude. Oh god, that was funny. Yeah, that was good. Certain political. Oh, there's, there's a guy with the Certain political perspectives. So you claim 80% of Star Wars fans are in one political party? Um, no, I, Dude, I, I, I would claim remember. Disney is. What? Like, what? Yeah, I don't even remember what he's commenting on, dude. Yeah. I don't know. But I'm, I, I'm happy you're using my photo that I paid for. I hope you enjoy it. It's, it's on the house, dude. It's all good. It's on the house. It's on me. Bitch! On me. <laughs> would you agree that Star Wars is a tragedy? Yeah, it's a tragedy of Anakin Skywalker. I don't know that I would agree it's a tragedy, actually. Um, because to me, like I view, especially like in the OT, right? Like I, I kind of view it as like a traditional heroic journey. Vader's role in that story is as like a sort of a mirror and baggage to Luke and the idea of like the sins of the father. And are you, uh, wrapped up in your past and all that shit. And I think empire is dark because like the second act is usually dark and it like drags your character through trials and tribulations. Right. So yeah. I think that people mistake that and they're like, oh, well, then this is tragic. And the story of Anakin Skywalker is tragic, but he's ultimately also saved and, and redeemed by his son, which is like fucking cool. 
It is cool. You know, so yeah. I don't know if I could say it's a tragedy. There's tragic elements for sure. And Vader's story is tragic in a lot of ways. Yeah, it is. George is never coming back. Come, You misspelled that. What are your thoughts on a Chewbacca Wookiee focused movie or show that picks up right after Yoda escapes from Kashyyyk? First time Super Chat in their three. Love for you guys' content. Thank you, Jesse James, 2016. Wookiee stuff would be dope, dude. Jesse James. Jesse Woodson James was an American outlaw bank and train robber, guerrilla, and leader of the James Younger Gang. Raised in the Little Dixie area of western Missouri, James and his family maintained strong southern sympathies. Born 1847, died 1882. Jesse James, yeah. Well, it looks like Jesse James has reincarnated. Narrated. Narrated. I wonder if he uses guns or blasters. Yeah, I don't know. We should ask Twitter. They're the same thing. Uh, the 2003 Clone Wars are, yeah, Clone Wars cartoon, Republic Commando. Heck, most of the prequel trilogy was considered doesn't look slash feel like Star Wars. Aesthetically and tonally at the time, it is fondly remembered by tons of original fans. There's some truth to this, yeah. Uh, especially about the prequels. Like, the prequels were a wild departure to what had come before. Uh, I would argue they still ultimately really feel Star Wars to me. Um, but yeah, that's fair. Yeah, good point. I like the Andor, but one complaint is I have uh, I have is where all the OG aliens. I don't know why they didn't throw in a Rodian, Twi'lek, Celestian. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that was one of the things definitely. we were talking about too. Was like, where are the aliens at? Where are they at, dude? This might sound crazy, but do you think Luthien is Palpatine's brother? Yeah, that sounds crazy. Like, I can't help but think who has. <laughs> Some kind of grudge with the Empire, and maybe he has a connection. <laughs> <with him. laughs> Who has a grudge against the Empire? Fucking everyone. Okay, let me explain. Everybody. I, I mean this with absolute love, Xavier, <laughs> but I wish I could lock you and Tony Gilroy in a car <laughs> and make you guys sit in traffic and have him, have you explain shit like this to him just over and over again. Like that feels that that would be awesome. <laughs> like that would be so be awesome. Great. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love Star Wars. I love George Lucas. I love Andor. I love democracy. I love the public. I love you guys. I hate Twitter. There you go. Well, you know what? We love you too. <laughs> Xavier said, LMAO. Damn. Bro, I, I said it wasn't on my channel. My bad, bro. Uh, Justin Pyle said, Hey guys, quick question. If Ray was a Jedi at the time Anakin's over the temple, you think she would have survived the purge? No, I don't think so, man. No. <laughs> Unless she's Reva and gets fucking stabbed know, 50 right? times by Darth Vader and yeah. survives. <laughs> Vader, just please stand in the same spot. <laughs> Yo, give me all you got, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I'm gonna come back. I want to see the story of Reva after Kenobi, where she realizes she kind of has like a fetish now for being stabbed because of you know just it happening so many times. <sighs> so she's got to go around and get uh people to stab her. You know, please stab me. It's is my thing. Yeah, it's my thing now. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's her thing to get stabbed by Vader. Anakin. Yeah, true. It's crazy that people donate and talk shit. Mail. True. It is kind of funny. Well, they just want to be heard. It's understandable. Yeah. Awesome. Much love to you guys. Would you say some of the fandom is toxic now since of the guys are attacking Theory for his opinion? Um, there's some of that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, it's not all the fans, but yeah, there's definitely a sect that that feel really you know, if you want to call it toxic positive or just assholes, you know, whatever. But yeah, they just, they definitely feel... Uh, Look, let me, let me say this. Yeah. If I didn't have uh, this many subscribers, no one would bat an eye. Mm -hmm. All right, it could be someone else in my place that would say something and it would be like, oh my God. And it's because I don't bend the knee, right? I don't, I just, I'm just me, dude. Like, I don't know. I don't know, bro. Maybe, who knows? Pe people don't have to like me, and that's okay. Just wondering what fasteners the Star Wars universe should use, if not screws, nails, rivets, 
which one would make you happy? Should welding exist in Star Wars? Welding does exist in Star Wars, if you remember mm -hmm. Empire Strikes Back when Han and Chewie were working on the Falcon on Hoth. Um, I don't know, bro, but it's it's better than a, a, a security camera that's just kind of like shittily, crookedly screwed into the wall. Yeah. But hey, that's that's just me. Rivets, facets, all sorts of different things that they could do. This dude's 100%. still going on about the guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Arthur, I've I've spoken my piece about this, brother. Uh, it's been a while since I stopped by working on my career, but I missed y'all. Got promoted to manager of Publix, and I can't be happier. Much love, brother. Hey, we're really happy right for on, you. That's man. awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Rob Slayer. Yeah. Right on. I always remember brother. seeing you before. That's cool. Lord knows we need a real Boba Fett content. Yeah, I, I please. We'll get some. Dude, like episode one, Boba just needs to be like, I'm done with all this managerial shit, shit and just like lose his mind. And then yeah, yeah, it goes nuts. And we're good. Chloe says, hey, guys, it's been a while since I've chatted here. Last I did, I had just gotten knee surgery, finally mm. healed. And you guys in Star Wars got me through it. Don't listen to the haters. Love you guys. That's awesome. I'm glad Thanks, you recovered. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you for the love. Okay now. Thank you for the love. Uh, how would you guys feel about a Star Wars original anime type show where it's Bleach slash DBZ and different power levels and nonstop fight? That shit would be fire, bro. Like, I've always thought that would be really fun. Sounds neat. Yeah. Get, Get it. it. Sounds knee. Uh, 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 so we just uh, had uh, knee surgery. Good one. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Relax, Jared Leto. <laughs> uh, in 30 plus years of being a fan, we have always disagreed with stuff and nitpicked, but with respect. Now, it's unbearable because Leech is profit off people like Theory and spin hot takes for endless clickbait. Yeah, that is definitely a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that a long time ago that people will often uh, use my name to get a lot of whatever, a lot of views and stuff. That's... Yeah. Glad I can feed them. Let's see here. Some clones of the first episode of Kenobi seem conflicted while Order 66 was happening. One seemed to shoot in the air as if he's trying to fight himself, even though no force moves were used against him. Oh, that's a nice detail. That's a cool detail to pick up on. The details in the background of the prequels are incredible. You ever just watch the prequels to watch yeah. the backgrounds? It's like, I would... like he, he had no reason to be that detailed yeah. in those backgrounds. That's what I always said. If you rewatch a movie, you've seen it. Like rewatch a movie and focus on background characters. It's like watching a whole movie for the first time. Yeah. The Yuzon Bong, Yuzon Bong, Bong trilogy, trilogy. Please. Oh hell yeah! She will be fire. She will be fire. Fire. What, what are you eating? Everything, Everything looks, looks so good. Yeah, you get um, another charcuterie board or what? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I I did. She uh, what? brought me a. <laughs> it's kind of eaten now, but uh, yeah, she brought me a um, little board. God damn, bro! Got some uh, mixed nuts in there. This one had some. I think a couple raspberries in there. There's just crackers and apples and grapes and some different cheeses. Well, good for you. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey. I was informed through my Imperial Spies that you saw my video. I was not expecting you would see it. Thanks for checking it out. Big inspiration for my Star Wars fan music videos. Take it easy, brother. Hey, uh, thank you for making the video. We love what you do, and uh, we wish you all the best, man. Maybe we'll have you on someday. We can all have fun. Yeah, man. Seemed like a chill dude. Love the uh, Admiral outfit, too. Yes. Super cool. Yeah. With cloning in Mando 2 Bad Batch, which show, new or current, will attempt to solve Palpatine has returned? If any, bricks and screws, please. I think that's going to happen a little more in Mando. Maybe Bad Batch as well. But yeah, I think they're going to kind of talk about it, like the contingency or whatever. Seems like they're going in that direction. I should hope so. Dave Batista says Darth Sion. That, yeah, that fits. Mm, okay, here we are. Thank you. Oh, jeez, bro. Oh, jeez, bro. Sequels use G36 rifles. RO used M4 carbines. They're all real guns, but I get you. I do think they could have dressed up the AK-47s and Andor to look more sci-fi. If you worded it differently, people would get it. Um, don't really know how else I could word that. I worded it pretty good. I mean, the guns didn't look like blasters. They looked like regular guns. 
They look like AKs. Yeah. I don't what further should I say, but um thank you. Yeah. We appreciate you. Um and your super chats, Arthur. Yeah. We appreciate you being Kermit, buddy. Thoughts on Studio Ghibli yeah. doing a Star Wars project. Uh, Josh is a huge fan. Oh, I didn't like that short at all, but I actually would love for them to like actually do something. Like, dude, Studio Ghibli movies are fucking awesome, bro. That short, though, was like, I don't know what this is. Like, I don't know what to do with this. So uh, if Ghibli's going to actually do some stuff, and there was some reports that Kathy and Dave did take a trip to Japan, and they actually did meet with a couple of animation studios. And so one must wonder if like, is there more like anime stuff coming from Star Wars? That would be sick, dude. Danny says Studio Ghibli did Dragon Ball. What? No, they did not. Uh, oh, you're gonna, he, dude. He's gonna pop off on you now. Wait, Danny said they did Dragon Danny Ball. Said they did Dragon Ball. Ghibli did what? What? Studio Ghibli did not do Dragon Ball. He's gonna. He's about to pop off. He says yes, they did. If there's a where, like what? Show me, bro. 1995. 1995. Really? Is it one of the films? Like uh, Tree of Might or some shit? Oh, okay. 10th anniversary special Path to Power. See, this dude, man, he's got the deep cuts. That's why he's <laughs> that's why he's Danny. I mean, honestly, I will go check that out though now. That that is right up my alley, bro. Oh, 1996. What's up, Callisto? A theory the Black Order 66 flex fit doesn't have an image on the doesn't have an image of the back in store. Does it have an adjustment? Uh, no. So flex fits are what a lot of you guys want. It's, this is what the back of the hat looks like. Yeah. It's literally just a nice clean cap. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're if you're a dude and you're kind of like a maybe a larger guy, I would go large XL. Um, it may not be like super ridiculously tight, but it's going to be better than the uh, small medium option. But if you have hair, it might be a little easier. I don't know. I, I, I don't have any hair and I'm I'm rocking a small medium and it's too tight for me. Just curious, how many hours a day do you guys spend on creating content? My brain gonks out after 12 hours graphic design. You guys are my Monday wind down. Oh, cool. So heard. Yeah, it depends on the day. Um, Mondays are long days for me. Uh, but like I usually try to like write or lately I've been trying to like get stuff to my editor over the weekend for Monday so that I don't have to be doing so much on a Monday. Um yeah, I don't know. It kind of depends on the day, but uh, for me, it's usually coming up with a stream idea, coming up with a video idea. Um, yeah. Uh, depends when we're talking. If we're talking now, um, depends on what's going on. It could be five hours. It could be 10 hours. Some days it could be two hours. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, I'd say the first, the first year for sure was... Um, 20 hours a day i was sleeping an average of four hours a night at most and like in those 20 hours obviously you like take some breaks and you eat and you like you know but i was literally glued to my chair in my apartment and um yeah so i would say in the beginning 15 to 20 hours probably a day but yeah after that it like winded down and then and then i hired uh, an editor after i think three and a half years and uh, things started to get a little easier from there, uh, time-wise. But now, in, in fact, because I have so many different people doing different things, I find I'm able to do more, but I almost am spending, like, maybe not the same amount of time, but a lot of time doing a whole bunch of different things instead of just, like, one thing. Yeah, same, same. It's like you find a way to fill all that time regardless. My flex fit size is actually medium large. I bought a small medium and a large XL and will return one that doesn't fit. Also, I didn't see anything about a discount for members. Love you both. Oh, okay. So for members, and I'll just drop it here for anyone who wants to go buy one just because you guys are at the stream. It's uh, the code is order 66, which will get you 15% off. Sick. Um, and uh, or you can use code theory to get 10% off. But if you're a member, which just gave that away, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, anyways, 
Uh, Andor is an essay. Star Wars is a poetry. Hey, I like that. I'm going to steal that and give you zero credit, Elijah. <laughs> Future Trunks. Man, Imagine if we got Duel of Fates. Of Fates. Uh, yeah. Would your opinions change on the sequel trilogy? My opinion should have been the final movie. Uh, I don't know that it would have changed everything, but it would have been damn better than uh, Rise, dude. Yeah, I think I think uh, Duel of the Fates would have been a lot better. Yep. Yeah. I wanted a hoodie, but couldn't figure out what size. Some brands, I'm M, some L. Well, uh, what are your stats, Sin City Sith? How tall are you? Uh, what do you weigh? How big are your boobs? How big... Your tits. God, how big. Uh, Fast Bruce, Bruce Faulkner, Faulkner track. Oh, this is the Geekdom 2. Oh. Maybe Vegeta Hell's Bells. Um, cell theme. I mean, you can't go wrong. <laughs> you can't go wrong with the cell yeah. theme. Then there were yeah, like remixes. It's crazy. It yeah. Wild. Yeah, I like that wild. one a lot. Yeah, I'd probably have to agree with that one's pretty sick. Definitely stands out. Uh, Sin City says 5'6 and 160. I'd go for medium. Go for a medium, go dude. A medium. Tell us about those boobs. <laughs> what are we looking at? Yeah. Yeah. So you're um, saying three theme? Yeah, that's pretty good, too. I'm I, hope take... you're a, I hope you're a dude, Sin City, Sith. Me, too. Like, big time. Because <laughs> otherwise, I'm way out of line. <laughs> Yeah, I could actually. Yeah. I've had my foot in Our my luck. mouth before. Yeah. Our luck. Yeah. Yeah, Gohan's theme. It's true. That's just That's wrong. Just wrong. A, A lot, lot were unmodified. Okay. Did unmodified MG34 E11 main stormtrooper gun barely modified. T21 is unmodified Lewis gun. And if you actually look at the AK and Antor, it's very modified. Bro, okay, how about this? What if I said you were right? What if I said you? I am just wrong. And what if I said, "Will you now just shut the fuck up?" Oh my god, bro! Like, okay, how about oh, we go the other way? How about shit. all the blasters that look like they're from Star Wars that look like actual blasters? And look, they're all modified. It's not like they're not modified at all. Like, why are we getting into the nitty gritties of this? I had a fucking live stream, and I said I think the blaster could have looked a little more blaster esque. You can't argue that compared to like a, a DL-44 or, or or whatever other blaster you want to bring out of the, the gate, that that AK-47 in that little shitty village looked a little too <laughs> primitive, I know, a little right? too from this world. Like they can't, they, you yo, can't, they can't accept grant that? you any of that. They're like, like, nope. And here's all the reasons why not, bro. God, I mean, what is wrong up, like, with you people? DOT unmodified MG34. Like, bro, what is this? The back of a prescription drug? Like, what do you like? Mean? Holy shit. You're being very pedantic, bro. Look that word up, Lickle. Oh, my God. Just okay. hope you know my comments are not supposed to be snark. Just genuine points slash thoughts. Sorry, oh, Twitter yeah, got no. your case. Love and or death, oh, but no. nobody needs to agree with me. You're valid. Yeah, yeah. So are you. Thanks, man. Love these streams. You guys rock. Thank you. Thanks, Martu. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. If you guys plays Forced Combat made by Last Jawa. Basically, Mortal Kombat with Star Wars. What? That sounds awesome. Uh, no, I've never heard of it, but I'm going to look it up. Forced Combat. It's like a mod or something? Uh, I think it's an old game from the 90s. Mm, okay. Play Forced Combat. Is that the one where they're fighting? Yeah, like more of them. I don't normally comment, but thanks for all you do on both your channels. I generally appreciate all the time and energy you put into everything. Well, that's really nice of you, Nathaniel. Thank you. Yep, thanks. It's interesting that we like one movie or episode that someone did and then a whole season on a character and it bombs, a.k.a. Kenobi, Book of Boba Fett, and or. You guys are amazing. Keep it up. Much love. Thanks, Chad. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Reba with a stab fetish. Mm, yeah, she got it. Agree they could have added more aliens and mod weapons. Small detail that would have made a difference. Ahsoka's mom also used a regular hunting rifle in Tails. Nice. It looks, you know, it looks like a rifle for sure. But I thought, you know, blaster rifles, whatever. So are the ones that the Tuscans use. 
Yeah, they look like uh, rifles. They actually do use like bullets, I believe, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bricks do a better job than Kathleen Kennedy ever does. Amen. Amen. If the haters knew how many of us, young and old like me, you've helped make it through tough days and inspired us, maybe they'd have a different take, but I doubt it. Please keep just being real. Thanks, man. Thanks. I know said, that was uh, still hope your theory, but uh, I'm going to hope you're a male. Just gonna, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, what happened to Andor trying to find his sister? Bro, right? Uh, no you think she's really dead? Imagine him going to Nar Shadda to try to find her. Yeah, true. Andor was amazing. I wish I could have licked the brick that made the set better. Andor should have <laughs> been much slower. I love Kathy Kennedy, a.k.a. Baby Mary. Studio Ghibli was one of the production cooperation studios. It wasn't a Studio Ghibli production, but that is pretty good deep cut, Danny. He sent me all this stuff on Discord. Uh <laughs> Hey, guys, it's been a while since I've tuned in. Thanks for all the positivity. Also, remember to drink water. We need Tales of the Jedi Season 2. Stan! Yeah, I agree. I had a guy who always would always say, uh, drink some water. He'd always super chat and say, drink water. Non-stop. That, well, that's good to drink water, though, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah so he's not saying, that. like, flick your balls or something, you know? Uh, they're choosing to use the most iconic weapon is exactly what Hannah was referring to with the screws. It's like they didn't even try to make it foreign. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but they won't ever uh, talk about that. I bet somebody brought it up to Tony Gilroy, and I bet he literally slapped this dude in the face. He's like, and, you know what? Sent him I home. see a vision where Star Wars Theory, the world's most toxic Star Wars commentator and YouTuber, will make a stupid comment about the screws if I use these regular generic ones. And we Let's want go. him canceled. Hell yeah. I see what you did. I'm I convinced get it. Arthur K is actually Tony Gilroy, and he's like just coming in here and uh, trying to, you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, sir. I didn't mean the gun discussion to get this out of hand. I accidentally did a double comment, which seemed like I was egging you on. No, it's all good, man. I appreciate you. Tony, is that you? Just tell us, bro. We won't tell Kathy. Thanks for the comment, buddy. We won't tell Kathy. Thanks, man. Hello again, Theory. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Good luck on Vader, too. That's Thank a very nice message. Yeah, yeah thanks, fuck, Nathan. finally. <laughs> I know, right? Like, we, had to, we had to get there, man, you know? Uh, exact cams, exact cams, cams in a New Hope prison. A New Hope not feel like Star Wars to you. Look at this guy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy, dude. This guy, this is the well actually guy at the party. This is the well actually guy. <laughs> well, actually, uh, there well. are rare cases in which having that disease ends up being good for you. Like, he's like, he'll find the way to, like, well actually, so like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, according to my calculations, you see, it's <laughs> actually, um, if I might not do a pause, it's actually, um, there were exact cameras in A New Hope. Prison sequence, uh, cut 42 cell B14, A New Hope not feeling Star Wars to you. Oh, shit, dude. Perfect. Yeah, Somebody man. clip it. Somebody yeah. clip it. Thanks. That was great. No, I guess A New Hope doesn't feel Star Wars to me. Yeah, true. I fucking hate Star Wars now. <laughs> Brian Lara says, going to catch the replay, guys, but I wanted to say I copped the B.O. merch to contribute a small portion Beautiful. towards Love Vader, it. too. Love you both. Stay bricked up. May the force Brian. be with you. Thanks, man. Make sure to tag me on IG, buddy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. In episode two, when Dooku was about to flee, why did Yoda not force throw the boulder rubble the other way on the Dooku ship in order to... <laughs> I'm sure. Eat this boulder, boulder, you will. <laughs> Bro, Yoda was having a hard time with those those rocks. Right. That it was, man. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. This old ass is going to be like... Eh. I know, right? Then you see him in episode three, and he's like just spitting shit and like throwing shit at Palpatine. It's like True. fine, yeah. And then uh, and then you see Ray, and she's like, oh, that's false. And it's like fifty million giant boulders levitating. But hey, I guess Ray's more powerful than Yoda. Hmm. Indeed, tis what it is. Tis, tis what, what it is, is, man. Shit, can't win them all. Can't win them Unless all. Unless you're Ray. Uh, thoughts on Tails not appearing in Nielsen top 10 sp streaming shows. You guys believed it was such a huge success compared to Andor LMAO. That's actually a fair point. Yeah, it didn't crack uh, Nielsen top 10 numbers. Hmm. 
Yeah. I think the show's Perhaps still because it wasn't well. a show that did that went every week. Well, here's the thing. Like, I'm going to do that thing that all these other people did for 12 weeks of Andor underperforming. And I'm going to, like, speculate on maybe some reasons as to why. Like, I would say because it's shorter episodes, there's not, like, a way for it to accumulate all this watch time in the same way that, you know, because it goes by minutes stream. So, like, Andor being ass long, having <laughs> nothing happen, is, like, <laughs> insanely adds numbers to it 12 right? episodes long yeah like 40 minutes plus yeah so that like that adds up over time now it didn't really add up for andor <laughs> but as far as for uh tales of the jedi yeah i mean you got like 10 minute episodes and some of the 17 i think is the longest one so you had what five so we had six episodes at 10 minutes long so we had we had literally one episode of andor and mm -hmm. you're expecting it to be in the i think you just kind of got combed but yeah, so, music. Yeah, okay. All right. There you go. Thanks. Do you think we'll ever see Rail Avaros on screen? I feel like Disney is getting more mature on their on screen content. Hopefully, see him. I mean, maybe. And also, we heart you too. I mean, that would be so cool. It just feels like a radical departure from what they're currently doing. Marvel is dipping their toe into some like more mature stuff with like Deadpool 3 and da uh, Daredevil. I don't know if that fits for Star Wars, though, to be honest. Raylo Avaros. Mm, oh, there's a thought. Do you like Warhammer 40k? I do like it. I just don't really know much about it. It's pretty sick. One of the greatest sequel tragedy. No Kyle Katarn. Yeah. Agreed. And they made the Kyle Katarn character just scream Ray the whole time. Also, just saying, since when is it AK-47 modern? 47 was literally made at the end of World War II. If you think of it that way, it fits perfectly in star wars damn i guess i just gotta think more like that yeah i mean you know what else was made in world war ii i don't know grenades why don't we just delete thermal detonators and put regular grenades in there um what else we got going on maybe a hb2 pencil dude why not hb2 pencils how about why some not? toilet paper why not uh ring doorbells ring doorbells uh yeah. why not uh skateboards yeah nikes why not dude jordan dude jordan yoda just walking around hmm. new nikes i have right they are the drip i have yeah check my drip you will <laughs> yeah, man. yeah let's you have a good point mm, great point collected your beer yet no but i'm going to the post office tomorrow so i'll check in on it then jens thank you Harry just Harry chest pick for Josh incoming. Ah oh, shit. Here we go, man. So how big are they? All big right. Harry tits. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Also, <laughs> Josh, Josh, what's with Kyle Katarn D riding you? I'm not sure. He seems to be particularly butthurt about me or my takes. Um Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Someone's uh Someone's a new admirer on Twitter. Yeah, we've got a couple of new uh, secret admirers. Ooh. Yeah. Real hot for uh, anything I say about the Star Wars, you know? Ooh. Mm. Mm. You're taking your first steps into a larger world. Oh, it's George. great, dude. <laughs> great. <laughs> Which one Star Wars theory leaves YouTube? No. <laughs> There is another. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then, then they'll be like taking the like wackest shit I say. <laughs> I can't believe he said this. Oh fuck! Uh, and or is slow and mature. It is not for stupid kids <laughs> like the OT and PC. Grow up theory. My wife's boyfriend and I. <laughs> Dude, damn. <laughs> My damn. wife's boyfriend and I had so much fun watching it together. I'm surprised he lets you watch stuff with him after all that crypto money you lost, Chris. What else uh, does he let you watch? I know, right? Uh, Palpatine, Palpatine season, two. season two. Probably no, not, bro. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, shit. Um, I'm a fan of the long rifle the clones used in episode two. How long were the clones produced? on Camino before they were phased out. I don't remember. Um, well, as we saw in the Bad Batch, they were... Uh, they blew up the facility. True. So it was like pretty much 
once Revenge of the Sith was uh, done, they just blew everything up. I'm a fa- yeah, yeah, sorry. I almost thought we were on another chat and just started reading his again. Oh. My bad. Uh, had turned off, came back from the toilet, and Star Wars Theory looked funny without sound. Big fan of your channel and Star Wars, especially love the lore. <laughs> What is this comment, what? dude? Like, I don't understand. The f- <laughs> I still have yet to watch Andor. The mail canceled my Disney Plus months ago, and I haven't looked back since. If I want to watch a show, I just use a pirated site. Seven C's for this guy. I'm not quite there yet, but uh, we'll see what happens after 2023. Since everyone's it's- talking about gun, any uploads on the Tactical Theory channel? Yeah, dude. What's up with your tag channel, bro? I haven't made a video in a while. You should do it. The next video should be using my favorite guns from Goldeneye. And you get like the RCP 90 or whatever, like, or, you know, the, like all the different Goldeneye guns, yeah, that'd dude. Be cool. That'd be so fun. Yeah, that'd be neat. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. What's up, boys? I drink 2.5 gallons of water per day. Does coffee count? Um, I think I drink probably three and a half. Three, three and a, three and I- a half. I drink a lot uh, of oh, liters, not gallons. Liters. Yeah. What's the difference between liters and gallons? I think there's yeah, more gallons. Per four liter, liters right? to a quart and four quarts to a gallon. I, I just made that up. I don't know. Okay. Hey, guys. They've been watching since eighth grade band camp. For reference, I'm a sophomore in college now. Thank you for your content throughout the years. It's really cool. Damn. That's awesome, man. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. god, I regret the gun comment so much. I'm so sorry. Everyone, please chill. I think they get it. Please, no more. Arthur, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, dude. It's all good. You're all right, man. You're all right. Yeah, you're all right. And also, I know you're Tony Gilroy. Yeah. If the Bad Batch and Rex clone themselves and took revenge on the Empire New Order, since apparently cloning is so easily done in Star Wars. That would be kind of cool. I mean, is cloning so easily done? No way one liter is a quarter of a gallon. If two and a half gallons, then you'd like barely drink any water. You're like a camel. Hmm. Oh my God, it is. What? Dude. Oh no, wait, hold on. Never mind. No, you guys lied. One gallon is 3.7 liters. Holy shit. Why do you drink so much water? That's a lot out of all water. your minerals. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's a lot of water. That's probably what? too much. Yeah, that's like freaking eight liters of water a day. Do you just like go into a winding river and just open your mouth up and just let it flow through you? Jesus. That's crazy. So I guess by that standard, I drink like, I don't know, a little, like a gallon a day. It's wild. I thought I drank a lot of water. I don't really drink water, you know? Why would you oh. do that? Huh. Shit weighs you down. I pee every 17 minutes. Like on the dot, 17 minutes? That's impressive, dude. Did you have like a really bad kidney stone one time and you are just like, never again? <sighs> What is the order for Disney Plus shows in 2023? Says Tony D. Kianduni. After Bad Batch Season 2, Mando Season 3, Ahsoka, Skeleton Crew, Acolyte. Also, the Feb 22 start date for Mando Season 3 could be true if they split Bad Batch Season in half. Also, will you watch Willow? Yeah, I'll watch Willow. I, I just don't know anything about it. Um, yeah, Josh, what do you think? I like that. Splitting in half could work. Um, that would be cool. Um, and as far as like, Skeleton crew and Accolade. Accolade, I have trouble believing. I think they sort of just started shooting Accolade. Uh, but I think Skeleton Crew was put into production pretty fast. So I mean it's possible. It's possible. Yeah, I don't I mean I don't think we'll get Skeleton Crew in 2023 or Accolade. I think yeah, maybe one, maybe, something. but uh probably not both. Well, I think Ahsoka will probably come out like what? If we if so, if we get Bad Batch sixteen weeks long comes out January fourth, 
let's say they drop like two episodes the first day or whatever right. again. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. okay, we still say 16 weeks or we could say 15 weeks. Uh, 15 weeks is what, four months almost? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So February, March, April, May. A little over that actually. Or no, um, no, a little under that, yeah. Yeah, so it ends just about May or like a little before May. So then we would get Mando probably I just like after, I guess. Nine or ten episodes. Yeah. And then uh, Which would I don't know us. what Ahsoka will be actually, so. Yeah, I don't know either. So it could be like the fall. Yeah, I I think like the, the way I'm thinking of it right now is like I'm just imagining Ahsoka in the fall. Um. But it could be early fall, and then they could start something. Because last time they started Mando, didn't they literally start it December thirty first? Like it was that was the first day, so it was technically in twenty twenty, but it was really a twenty twenty one show, right? I think. Or was that Boba that they did that to? It was Boba that came out in the last it, month. It ended in February. I think. Or did it okay. come out? Yeah, no, it, it came out the end of December and ended in February of uh, 21. Or was it 22? No, it was 22. Yeah, ended in February 22. Okay, yeah. Um, in an alternate universe where George never sold, what is the movie George would have created after episode three? The sequels. Sequels, yep. He had with actually, weird, begun, uh, actually begun episode seven. It was weird uh, shit going on for sure, but still be dope. Favorite Star Wars video game? Ah, probably Force Unleashed or Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, Shadows of the Empire is pretty high for me. The original Rogue Squadron on Nintendo 64 was sick, too. Trudeau banned weps. Don't post about them. Delete this channel fast before a hater rats you out to the government. Yeah. Ah, shit. That's true. Yeah. Don't worry about Luke that. Luke drinks two gallons of a... I love running around on the battlefield games like wielding my AK-47 mowing down stormtroopers. Hell yeah, Charlie. Don't <laughs> we all? Good time. Hell yeah. People fail to realize that the AK-47 is known worldwide by everyone, but the STG-44 much lesser known. They should use more obscure guns. I agree. About Yoda letting the galaxy burn, he told Astra about Malachor. Makes me wonder what else he did known. What else he, what else he knew to destroy the Empire? I think Yoda knew a lot more. I think we'll probably get a Yoda show someday. Yeah, we're like a maybe book. in a game. Yeah, when you were jumping up and down, look oh, funny about context. Oh, okay, gotcha. That makes more sense. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what? Probably like, what the hell's happening? Yeah, yeah. Fifteen nice, hour shift. Dude. Holy shit, dude! Crack a beer if you do that. Have a smoke if you do that, or do whatever you got to do. Unwind. <laughs> Bro, after a 15 hour shift, are you kidding me? I'm cracking a beer and rolling something. Yeah, bro, up. put your put your feet up, have a protein shake and beat off. Dudes. Let's put Let's Filoni put in charge of an episodic cartoon set post Endor following Luke, Leia, Han. Clone Wars style arcs starting with a truce at Pakara arc loosely following legends. That'd be sick. Yeah, well. Wouldn't that be neat? That would be neat. Do you think we will see Leia and Han in the Ahsoka show? I think it would be amazing to see Leia talking to Force Ghost Anakin. Have a great week. Uh, I don't know, but I would love to see Han. And if they do, like maybe Carrie Fisher's daughter as Leia, I'd be down. I, I think it's really interesting. And maybe if that tech is getting really good, why not? The song is used for the episode 12 breakdown. All my music is um, commissioned by artists. So most of them are by Samuel Kim. So I paid him for each track. So everything's kind of unique. True. I'll have a glass of Ahsoka juice. Damn! Okay. All right. Let's know both of your favorite Star Wars novels. All the best. Um, Probably. It's got to be Plagueis, dude. I mean. Plagueis is number one. That shit is so it. good. Yeah. And um, then like maybe Lords of the Sith for me. Dooku Jedi Lost. Well, it was okay. Um, the first Bane novel I really liked. Hmm. Um, what was the one Brotherhood or whatever with uh, Qui Gon and Obi? Is right. that what it was? Uh, yeah, that no, was that's cool. Master and Apprentice. Yeah, Master and Apprentice, great book. Hope great we don't book. see Lux Bonteri. F that guy, Luke Soga. Amen. I don't know who that is. 
Wanted to answer the question from earlier. At the beginning, clones were produced on Kamino, but in Legend, towards the end of the war, Palps produced clones on Coruscant. These clones were called Spirity Arty clones? clones. Okay. Yeah, there were these clones, and they they did a bunch of different experiments with clones. There was one experiment where they did like these like creatures with shovels for hands, and they were used for mining. Really? Yeah. That's kind of wild. Yeah. Oh my god, no. Where'd you go? <sighs> My stupid camera battery, even though I have it plugged into my computer. That's convenient because we actually just got to the end. Okay, well. No. Yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> we'll have to say goodbye to you like this. <sighs> well, love you guys. Hope you uh, enjoyed today's stream. <laughs> I'm definitely not picking my nose right now, guys, just so you know. Uh, hey, Knox, how's it going? in chat. We love you guys. We appreciate you. We just want you to know that, you know, whether you agree or disagree with us, we're always here to hang out with you and um, if you ever find it in your hearts to want to converse with us respectfully, we're always available. Um, and yeah, we really appreciate you guys because we wouldn't be here without you. So go subscribe to Josh's channel at the Den of Nerds. Go buy my merch while you still can. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. I love you all. And yeah. Peace out. Peace, yeah. peace out, everyone. I'm, I'm still here. Goodbye. Goodbye. And you're sounding like a separatist.